The weather outside is hardly frightful as we count you down to the holidays with the gift of Division I men's college basketball here on your CW6. The Alcorn Braves playing their final of a six-game road stretch here in the Valley tonight at GCU Arena. I'm Kate Longworth. The Lopes six and five right now overall this season, and they are riding a three-game road winning streak here at home here at GCU Arena. They haven't had all wins this year, though, but those losses, they're still worthy of talking about. I thank you so much for joining us here on the Lopes pregame show. And normally we do talk about those W's, but the losses for the Lopes this year, they've come to some powerhouses, the likes of Duke and Louisville and Arizona. And so these players, they feel like those losses as well as the wins are keeping them poised and ready for WAC conference play that is just around the corner. I think it gives us a lot of confidence knowing that we can play against anybody. So when we go to those tough places, you know, like New Mexico State at New Mexico State and things like that, we're going to be ready because we, uh, we played against the best competition in the country. In terms of coming to WAC play, it, is, it was really good because it was a couple, of, a couple of games in a short time frame, then a little break, then we went on the road. That's sort of what WAC play is like, that consistent schedule. So, and the WAC's going to be tough now. So the three consistent tough games going to help us big time for when we, especially that first start of the WAC, game, WAC games, we got Utah Valley, then New Mexico State, and UTRGV on the road, so we need to be ready for those games for sure. As the Lopes use this holiday break to prepare for their WAC conference schedule ahead, it's a treat for those local fans because they'll get a chance to see some Lopes games up close and personal, whether you're dialed in right now to the CW6 or heading out to GCU Arena tonight on Thursday or next week on the 28th as well. Lots of exciting things to talk about, and the guys who know this team the best are, of course, Barry Boutel and Scott Williams. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Not that you had a choice, but I know there's no other place you'd rather be. That's no right. other place, obviously, than uh, GCU Arena around the holidays. We encourage everybody to come out and check out GCU basketball. If they were here the other night against Mississippi Valley State, well, they saw a pretty good game. Mississippi Valley State wasn't going to go away without putting up a fight. No, they didn't. I mean, they got behind 24 points in that second half, and they kept fighting. It wasn't the greatest game as for the performance in that first half. Coach Marley wasn't real happy at halftime with his walk-off interview comments, but the second half, they really got the message, and they came out and played much stronger. They played together. I think we were losing past that uh, Mississippi Valley State team just a little bit in that first half, and took them a wake-up call. Once they really turned it on, they looked like a well-oiled machine out there. And Jared Martin, what a game he had. 13 points, seven boards, three assists, two steals. Jared Martin perhaps getting back that spark that TCU fans are familiar with for number 42. But one spark that's been provided with all of the injuries is the youngster, Kerwin Smith. He uh, had 23 minutes of some pretty good basketball. He really has stepped up nicely for the end of Darian Clark and Keontae Vernon got in foul trouble. He had to come off that bench, play some extended minutes. Like you mentioned, I might start calling him K Dunk because everything he catches around that basketball, he slams back through that basket with authority, really uses his length around the basket well on both ends of the basketball court. I love the fact that he is following the guards towards the rim now, getting those easy passes, shooting a very high percentage, shoots 73% on the season because he's playing well around the basket. Ten points, six rebounds for Kerwin Smith, shining the uh, sophomore, the redshirt sophomore from Dallas, Texas. Well, one player we've been talking about from the very start of the season, zero the hero, Dwayne Russell, doing it again, 40 minutes, yet again, putting up the points. Yeah, doctor made another house call. I mean, this kid was absolutely fantastic from behind the yard. He does a nice job really getting the defense off balance when he's got the ball in his hands. He does a nice job playing off the ball now when they got Fifi to do in there coming off the score. Curl screens, getting to open spots on the floor. Four or seven shooting from behind the arc. 24.3 points per game among the leaders in all of NCAA action. 5.1 assists per game. 18 of 42 from the arc. He is doing it all. And Boy, got to, 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 so many injured guys out there. They're the walking wounded. I mean, we've got uh, obviously Josh Brana's out, Bubaka Torre, Matt Jackson, Kendo Nudo, uh, now Darian Clark, latest with that shoulder injury. So he and Jared Martin having to play 38 to 40 minutes on a nightly basis. A little bit of uncertainty around Darian Clark. He's had that right shoulder issue with USC. Gets re-injured uh, at Arizona against the Wildcats. So this team's going to have to overcome some injuries. The bench, of course, two players coming off of that bench for the most part. Uh, 
We'll see Dwayne Russell probably for the max out 40 minutes. You know, I really love the way he can play, though, because he's learning to play and manage those minutes where he can be aggressive at times when he needs to be, but knows how to lay back and get others involved when he has those opportunities as well. Alcorn State, the Braves come in with an overall mark of 2-7. and seven. This is the conclusion of a road trip. They're looking for their first victory on the road. Here is a team that has done well in Southwestern Athletic Conference play, but so far they're having some difficulty early on. Yeah, they haven't got up to the start that they would have liked, but they played tough competition. I mean, they played a Louisiana Tech, they played Cal Poly, they played California. Georgia They've Tech. lost those basketball games. And yeah, Georgia Tech on Sunday, but they compete hard, much like this GCU team does. If you're not ready to play, you'll be in for a dog fight all night long, and they got some pretty good beef inside, too. Yeah, one of the guys with beef is Reginald Johnson. He's the sixth man. He comes off the bench, but he leads this team in scoring. Yeah, 6'5", 250. He comes off that bench and does a really good job. She was 54% from the field, 35% from behind the arc. He had 15 points at Georgia Tech on Sunday, 25 points at Louisiana Tech. Kid knows how to put the ball in the basket. Reginald Johnson, also uh, Marquise Vance. A couple of players we'll be talking a lot about this evening as they go up against GCU. Kate, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you, guys. And I know you talked a little bit about the walking wounded and just the looks really being plagued with the injury bug so far this season. I know that's considered a negative. You want all your guys out there healthy and contributing. However, can some positives come out of this situation? We're seeing young guys step up, maybe guys who want to get this many minutes, seeing playing time. Is this a confidence boost in some way. Can we draw some good from this? Well, absolutely. I love when guys have opportunities. Kerwin Smith making the most of those opportunities. Beef you do, we didn't talk about, had a fantastic game. Even Shaq Carr's getting some extended minutes, but the biggest probably recipient of some of the injuries they got is Oscar Frere, freshman out of Oakland, really being aggressive offensively and, and shown that he can play on so, both sides of the of the basketball court. I'm not sure Dan Marley knew what a strong defender this kid can, it really is. Getting steals, blocking shots, does it all. Yeah, when your number's called, you make good and uh, try and make a name for yourself, and we're certainly seeing evidence of that. Thank you so much, guys, and don't go too far. We'll be right back to you for a call of the game as we count you down to tip off here on the Lopes pregame show on the CW6. Coming up right after the break, Dan Marley sits down with our very own Barry Battelle to talk about the game at hand and as the calendar turns to 2017, what's in store for the Lopes when it comes to WAC competition? We've got it all covered right after this. It's that time again. Time to be thankful. Time to be with loved ones. A full calendar and a full plate. Family Christmas and family traditions. The years go by fast. And the holidays, even faster. Now's the time to make room for what's really important giving back and going forward, building memories and creating a better future. This is your season. Seize it. GCU's online degree program puts you first so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. gcu.edu. Be sure to tune in to the Dan Marley Show for an up-close look at the GCU men's basketball team, recaps of recent games, including Louisville and San Diego State, and, of course, pearls of wisdom from the man himself, Coach Dan Marley. Stay tuned for upcoming shows on the 7th and 21st of January, February 4th and 25th, and a final season recap show. That's the Dan Marley Show on CW6. The Lopes pregame show comes your way from the GCU Arena as we celebrate this holiday season. We welcome in the head coach, Dan Marley, after... A big victory the other night. You guys are on a roll, but you still, uh, boy, you got some elves missing. You're, you're only two, <laughs> two of them coming off the bench for support. Yeah, they just uh, keep getting hurt. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate. We have uh, uh, eight scholarship, seven scholarship guys now. So uh, we got to play hard. We got to play well. We got to play without fouling. And uh, hopefully we can do that again tonight. Uh, Darian Clark goes down at uh, Arizona. What a big blow that was with that right shoulder. And apparently, uh, he had some issues with that at USC. Yeah, it's the same shoulder here at USC. He had uh, surgery on it this summer. Um, got back finally, and then uh, 
uh, separated again. So he's still in a sling. I don't know when he'll be back and how effective he is or will be when he gets back. Uh, mm. That's a bothersome thing for him. We'll probably have to have another surgery once the season's over. Well, a youngster has been stepped in. Of course, we've seen Oscar Freyer for every game. But how about Fifi Adu stepping in and, and carrying a bit of the load? Well, you know, Fifi's got to play well. He's thrust into the starting lineup. Uh, this is a guy that we didn't uh, think would play a whole lot this year. Probably mm -hmm. redshirt him, and uh, he's got to step up. Uh, defensively, he's really good, can really guard the basketball, but we're asking him to do a lot, and he's had some big games where he stepped up, made some threes, and uh, as as he continues to grow and gets more aggressive, he's a very athletic kid who can get to the basket strong, can finish. So uh, this would be a good thing for him that we get uh, a, a lot of competition early. And another guy that stepped up as of late is Kerwin Smith. He had quite a few minutes and uh, had double digit scoring and was close to double digits and rebounding. Yeah, you know, Kerwin uh, has gotten a lot better uh, throughout the summer. He's still got to, uh, you know, play a little harder uh, consistently when he's in there. He can really rebound the basketball, um, but he's just got to fly around and have a little bit of motor. But he's a guy that's got to be in there, block some shots for us and clean up around the basket. And that's what he can do really well is get out and run the floor. He's very athletic and we like to see him do a little more of that. Well, he'll definitely have to step up as you continue uh, getting ramped up for conference play but one guy that's been there his shooting has been a bit off but uh, he leads the team in steals Jared Martin a bit off yes just the tad um, it's the holidays yes you know? it is you, uh, you know Jared is well, it's all in between the years you know in practice he, he makes most of the shots uh, he's very smart defensively gets out in the passing lanes uh, knows where he's supposed to be uh, good pass or sometimes he tries to do too much and uh, he's a guy who's just got to make open shots and I expect him to start make I sat down with him yesterday I said it's time it's time for you to start making shots because as he said in practice uh, he makes most of them he'll make 80 uh, 75 out of 100 threes every day in practice and then for whatever reason when game time starts he maybe pushes too much and uh, misses a lot of shots so I expect him to step up tonight and the rest of the season start making smoke and jumpers. Were you mentally tough when you played or did you ever kind of get those as they say in golf the ips a little bit where you just started thinking a little bit too no, much? No. Been around no, like Yeah that? well I've been around guys like that uh, but if you're a shooter you just gotta you know wipe it off and just shoot the next one and think it's going to go in and uh, I think Jared beats him out, beats himself up a little bit too much um, and we're asking him to do a lot you know that's really not his thing uh, he'd probably be a fifth or sixth option uh, if all our guys were helping he'd be in there just playing hard and asking him to make a few shots but he's you know got to take a lot of threes and unfortunately now we expect him to make a lot of them well Mississippi Valley State uh, was riding quite a road string before they came into GC arena you ended up beating them by 10 here is a uh, team coming in in Alcorn State that is Finishing up a five game road trip of their own, looking their first road victory. Yeah, they're two and seven. Uh, they've won their, their two home games. Uh, they played some really, really good teams on the road, so they're 0 and seven. So, as I said, uh, that record doesn't reflect. They're, they're a good team. Uh, uh, they're big, they're athletic, they can get out and run. Uh, they got some big guys down there who can punish you inside. So, I expect this to be a very hard game. Uh, and if we don't play well, we'll get beat. So our guys know that this is a team, although they're in two and seven, is a lot better than the record says. Yeah, you mentioned size. It seemed like they're a lot bigger than Mississippi Valley State. A couple of guys, Reginald Johnson coming off the bench as their sixth man, and Marquise Vance also doing a good job. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Their best players uh, usually come off the bench. The three yeah. top guys uh, are guys who come in uh, off their bench. I don't know if they'll start tonight. So we have to be ready when they come in to, to guard them. And, and like I said, uh, they like to get out and run. They take early shots. They crash the boards. Uh, so we're going to have to do a good job, especially in the post of not fouling and making them take tough shots. Well, the uh, Western Athletic Conference, a big, uh, big win for New Mexico State against Arizona State. Seattle U's playing better. Utah Valley is playing really well. And uh, New Mexico State, though, they're on an eight, nine game winning streak. New Mexico State's playing well. They always do. They got guys who've stepped up. They have guys that are sitting out and then they step in uh, uh, and they do that every year. So the league's a lot better mm -hmm. this year uh, from top to bottom. As you mentioned, New Mexico State, uh, Bakersfield is always good and they play hard. Uh, UMKC is better. Utah Valley is a team that's really stepped up. They got some transfers, some guys, mm -hmm. and uh, they've went into some tough gyms, beat BYU, played Utah to a, you know, a really close game. So uh, we got to get on a little bit of roll here because we know uh, our first game is against Utah Valley here, uh, you know, in Grand Canyon. So it's going to be it's going to be a tough year. This uh, conference has gotten a lot better, which is good for everybody. It indeed is. Good luck tonight against Alcorn State. Thank you. Head coach Dan Marley, our guest. Stay with us. More of the Lopes pregame show continues from D.C. Arena. After six days of competition at the FINA World Swimming Championships, head coach Steve Schaefer feels his Lopes men's and women's teams are ready to compete for the WAC championship. We'll preview the team when we return. You're watching the Lopes pregame show here on CW6. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. 
GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Welcome back as we take a trip down the Lopes ways. The, the fans filing in for tonight's game as Alcorn State Braves pay a visit to the Grand Canyon University Arena for a big Division I men's basketball matchup tonight. Tip-off is at 7. We're counting you down to tip-off here on the CW6. I'm Kate Longworth. Well, as you remember, the Lopes transitioning now into Division I play. And when they made that transition, men's and women's swimming coach, Steve Schaefer, knew he wanted his players up be able to step it up for that level of competition. And now that they've proven they have the talent, well, he's not stopping till they get the gold, that being the WAC championships. Busy summer, didn't have much we had to do with the men's. Ranked 39th in uh, D1, 9th in, as mid-majors. We were able to finish up getting a really strong women's class this year, so we're very happy about that. Third year of the diving program. On the guys' side, we got strong pretty quick. We brought in a Brazilian diver, Pietro Huffnagel Toscani. He's a fantastic diver. I, we, we think he has an opportunity to win the WAC. The women's program is coming along, hoping to get one recruit in this year. We're still working on that. We're building off of the women's program, but we just, we're looking to make that stronger yet. My class is pretty young. Overall goals for this season, going into next season, is two to three guys to qualify for the NCAA zone meet. I'd like to get one to two girls in. That way, when we are able to compete at the NCAA championships, I'd like to get one member from the team to go to that championship meet. If we can finish third in the WAC, we'll be happy with that with this year. The same ranking in NCAA and mid-major would be fantastic. For the women, we'd like to see them move up at least a place in the WAC and finish second. We expect the men to have four or five individuals qualified to NC2As next year, at least one or two of the relays in. On the women's side, we've got one or two women who are hoping to have an NC2As next year, and certainly by the, by the second year in to have women and men both at the meets. After third place finishes last year, the Lopes have their eye on the prize heading into the spring. They are going for first when it comes to that WAC championship. Well, still plenty more basketball talk coming up on the Lopes pregame show right after the break. We're going to talk with the man who's kind of the heart and soul behind the spirit here at GCU. We're halfway through the year. The campus continues to grow both physically and spiritually. The Dean of Students for the Office of Spiritual Life will fill us in on everything coming up next. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things that can't necessarily be taught. And so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, 
that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you change my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back inside GCU Arena, where we're counting you down to tip off tonight between the Alcorn Braves and your GCU Lopes. And we want to remind you as you're watching this game and you got your phone in hand, find us on Instagram and Twitter. Use the hashtag Lopes Rising and be a part of our broadcast. The tweets are running on the screen below, and it could be your tweet, especially you have fans that are at home right now for the holiday season. We want you involved. I'm Kate Longworth, and you're watching the Lopes pregame show here on the CW6. And I'm joined by a very special member of the faculty here at GCU, Tim Griffin, who is the Dean of Students and the ca campus pastor. We see you at every game, getting everyone <laughs> ready for it, but it's great to have you as our guest. Thank you. That, thank you for being here. And now that we're at the almost halfway mark of the school year, how's everything going? You know, it's been a phenomenal year. This, uh, this year we have 9,300 plus students living on campus. So it's completely changed the vibe on campus every day, every week. So it's been a pretty incredible year. Yeah, you can sense that. In fact, when Rick Pitino was out here for the Louisville game, that was the question he asked. How many students are out here on campus? Because he was feeling their presence. And when you look back at just what's happened so far this year, what events, occasions, activities stand out to you? Well, I think one of the things that uh, most people would not anticipate when you grow as fast as we've grown to the size that we have, that we've continued to maintain a great community culture. Students uh, still are friendly. Yeah. They still greet each other. And we have guests on campus. Guests always seem to comment about how warm the students are just walking from building to building. So I think one of the things that has been a, a pleasant surprise is that in spite of our growth and our size, that we've kept that small campus feel. So being a community is really important to the student body and obviously to the university, but the students have really carried on that tradition and that vibe around campus that it's a small town kind of feel. Yeah, and you're feeling that vibe tonight because a lot of the students are at home for the holidays. But tonight, the Havocs that live locally, they're here. And then the community and a lot of the staff out here for the games, a lot of families tonight. What is the campus just like for the student life as well as the community around the holidays? Well, um, we only have about 600 students living on campus during the Christmas break. And most of them are athletes or international students or student workers. They have a really small student presence on campus during the holidays. But we focus uh, as a university on a lot of other groups that are really important to the university as well, like our employees. Tonight we had a big Christmas party for all our 3,000 plus employees and just a great atmosphere around the campus. And so I think it kind of helps carry over what the students bring on a regular basis to have special nights like tonight during the holidays. Yeah, and as you look to the new year ahead, what goals do you have for the rest of this school year? Well, we uh, obviously want to carry on strong through the spring semester. Um, the, the, the atmosphere from the fall to the spring is very noticeable from the standpoint that the first part of the year, they're all excited to be here, all these new freshmen, and then you get into the second semester, they all kind of zero in on what they're here for to get an education. They've already figured out what friends they're going to have through the spring semester, and those are getting ready to graduate. They're kind of focused on the finish line. So second semester is, all right, we have a big push to the end. Right. Uh, one of the other factors that is really important to us in student affairs is that we select our student leaders for the next school year. So that's a big initiative for us in the spring semester to find those student leaders that are going to serve the community next year. Yeah, and taking a look at some of the leaders who are present at these games, they have some big shoes to fill for sure. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Tim, for being thank here with you. us. I know we'll see you down at the court and at games to come. And speaking of tonight's game, well, we still have plenty to talk about here on the Lopes Play Game Show. And how about the Lady Lopes in action against an interstate rival? We've got the details right after this on the CW6. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. 
We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. Christmas from Grand Canyon University. Cue the purple pregame party. We are just moments away for tip off between the Alcorn State Braves and your Grand Canyon Lopes. We're counting you down to tip off on the Lopes pregame show here on the CW6. I'm Kate Longworth. Well, tonight we're going to be talking a lot of men's basketball with the Lopes in action, trying to win their fourth straight at home. But how about the Lady Lopes setting the stage this week for some strong basketball? Well, they came out very strong. Let's take a look at how it all played out. In an afternoon matinee yesterday between NAU and GCU, the two teams had not met since 1993. Now, leading scorer Marina Laramie looked on for the second game in a row with a foot injury, but no problem because her teammates stepping up. Jessica with a bat late bucket to close the gap at the half to just three. And then it was all Jess in the second half. The Aussie native put up a career high 31 points off the bench to lead the Lopes to a 76-65 come from behind victory. This is their fourth in a row and raised their home record to an impressive six and one now. The lone loss was to nationally ranked Washington. Looking at these numbers, Casey Rarick with 17 points and Bree Mobley making her debut this season for the Lopes. She had her first game and she got six points, making for a very happy coach, Chuck May. Did a great job tonight stepping up. We've, we've had so many different starting lineups and different rotations. I'm just really proud of their effort, proud of what they're just giving on a daily basis. I couldn't be more proud of the staff, um, all that they're doing. So it was a great win today. We've run a streak right now, and it doesn't matter who's, who's getting it done. Our girls step up and get it done. And now we're going to chat a little bit about what's in store for men's basketball. We talked about these non-conference games over the holiday break being big because the Lopes, they are gearing up for a whack play. Let's look in on the competition. New Mexico State coming out on top yesterday with an 85-79 victory in overtime. Meanwhile, Seattle U gets the W over Southern Utah, 89-75 the final there. Chicago State falls short at Missouri State, a 20-point loss there. And tonight we'll have our eyes on UMKC as they host UT Martin. And of course, center stage is all about the Lopes. We're counting you down to tip off. It is on the other side here on the CW6. Barry and Scott will be right back with the call. And we'll get your holiday set with this great gift of men's college division one basketball. Don't go anywhere. Hoops are coming your way right here on the CW.
college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we played before. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Come on, go, go get him now. Let's go. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight, the Lopes play host to the Braves from Alcorn State. Hello and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Gary Vitell. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes riding high after a 10-point victory the other night against Mississippi Valley State, a game in which a number of players stepped up, Dwayne Russell, one of them, and then Kerwin Smith as well. Yeah, fantastic contributions from those guys. We're really working hard for their baskets. I love the way Jared Martin really played well. Kerwin Smith was big around the basket. Dwayne Russell was just using that full motor that he's got on both ends of the floor. There you see Jared Martin. He chipped in with 13 points and seven rebounds. But as I mentioned, Kerwin Smith really shined. 23 minutes in the game, 10 points. Also picked up six rebounds. Yeah, stepping up big for the edge of Darian Clark. And Keontae Vernon was in foul trouble. Used his length around the basket, blocking shots, slamming balls home. And I love the fact he went to the line and made four, four free throws. Alcorn State, the Braves coming in, concluding now a six-game road trip. They come in having lost the previous five on the road. They are two and seven overall, and their big score comes off the bench. Reginald Johnson. Oh, you mean big is right. 250-pound. Yeah. 6'5", he had 25 points against Louisiana Tech, he had six, 15 points Sunday against Georgia Tech, and remember, they got beat pretty good last time they were here, so Reginald Johnson's looking for the big payback. We shall see, let's get this thing started. Let's send it over to the public address announcer, Paul DeNuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GCU Arena and tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Alcorn State University Braves and your Grand Canyon University Envelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by senior dance team member and a student working on her master's in leadership, Kara Seerate. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for tonight and for bringing us all here together. Um, I just pray for a hand of safety over everyone out here on the court tonight, God, and that everything that's done out here is done for your glory. God, I thank you for this season and for you sending your son down here for us, God. We love you and it's in your son's name we pray, amen. Thank you, Kara. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the National Anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Tempe Preparatory Academy's High School Choir, Cantamus, led by Choir Director Mrs. Marlon Ray. Tempe Preparatory Academy is a nationally recognized liberal arts charter school that was recently ranked as the number one high school in Arizona by Newsweek Magazine.
Tepe Preparatory Academy. Great job by the Tepe Prep Academy with our national anthem. Kara Sarati with our prayer for this evening as the Alcorn State Braves come in with a record of 2-7. and seven. They're 0-7 away from home. Head coach is Montez Robinson. He's in his second season. 17-22 and 22 overall in 39 games. Here is Montez Robinson starting five. We go with Denzel Doolin, A.J. Mosby, Tyler Carter, Yellen Reed, and Marquise Vance. Yeah, we're going to keep our eyes on A.J. Mosby, 6'3", 160-pound junior guard from Cartersburg, Georgia. He had 16 points on four or five three-point shots versus Georgia Tech on Sunday. Really get it going. He had three rebounds, three assists, one block shot. You put pressure on him, he can turn the ball over. So a lot of guard ball pressure on him when he's handling the rock. Assistant coaches are Delvin Thompson, Frank Popiski, and Derek Thompson. As Montez Robinson spent four seasons as an assistant before coming to Alcorn State at Bethune Cookman, six seasons on the staff at Kennesaw State University. It's time now, though, to introduce you to Grand Canyon University. State Credit Union committed to you. Head coach Dan Marley has these five. Dwayne Russell, Jared Martin, Fifi Edu, Keontae Vernon, and Oscar Freyer. Yeah, 6'2", 200 pound Fifi Edu is what we're going to watch tonight. Averages 4.8 points per game, shooting 33% from the field. Get 15 points versus San Diego State. 13 last game against Mississippi Valley, Valley State. Kid is absolutely did I when he gets to the free throw line, shooting 87% from the free throw line. There you look at Jared Martin, Dan Marley in his fourth season, 65 and 42 overall. The associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistants are Chris Crevelone and T.J. Benson. Direct, director of basketball operations is Luke Dallariva. The assistant director of basketball operations is Jeffy Fowl. Dwayne Russell, fourth in the country in minutes played. 38.1, 24.3 points per game, ranking third in the country. Definitely carrying the load for the GCU Lopes. Coming in overall six and five, four and two here on their home court. Time now for Scott's Keys to the game, brought to you by your Valley Hyundai dealers. Shop by Hyundai.com today. Yeah, we're well, actually going to honor some. Alcorn State famous alumni, Donald Driver, the old football player for the Packers, is beware, beware and be ready to run the Braves. Three-point sharpshooters off the arc if they get hot. Make them drivers. And Alex Haley, offensively, get into the paint early and stay there until you grow roots down in that paint. Oh, strong. And Michael Clark Duncan, walking the green mile for two full moons and your teammates' high tops builds camaraderie, which translates to better protection on the court. And this Lopes team, shorthanded, certainly has been benefiting from the camaraderie that they have. And it is really producing some serious form of basketball. Crowd will remain on his feet until the Lopes hit their opening bucket. We are underway. And once again, Oscar Freyer wins the opening tip. That streak is alive. Freyer, wow. Up to Russell. Russell inside, Martin all the way to the near side. Freyer bounce pass inside. Keontae Vernon, too heavy. Pulled down by Marquise Vance from Mississippi. I like that one early. Get the big man established inside. Throw the ball early so he does the work on the glass and defensively. A.J. Mosby got a career high 16 against Georgia Tech. Leads to him, gives it to the big man. Vance, long range bucket. The Braves on the board. Yeah, it, it, that's one thing you got to worry about. Don't worry about size thinking, you know, the smaller players can only shoot threes on this team. Every one of these Braves players is capable from behind the arc. Baseline drive, try to dish it out to Keontae. Aaron pass picked up by A.J. Mosby. 
Mosby, Reed. Moves to his left now. Doolin. Doolin moves around Vernon, dishes back inside, and a nice pass and put back by Reed. Oh, wow, beautiful execution of the screen roll that time. Nobody coming over on the weak side helping out. Russell. Fifi, wide open. Too heavy. Pulled down by Vance. Looking inside. No look. Threaded the needle on the pass, knocked out. Braves are looking to run there. They got yep. that rebound, and he. Only five seconds came off the shot clock, and the man was at the rim. Look at this one here. Just a nice little roll there. Keontae Vernon shows out on that screen, but somebody from the weak side, is Gerald Martin or Pete you do, someone's got to be ready to come over and pick up that roll, Vance, so he doesn't get an uncontested layup. Vance on the duel and duel quickly. To Mosby back into Vance. Keontae comes out to support Martin back inside. Reginald Johnson quickly in the game, their leading scorer. Back to Vance. To the big bodies in the game for the Braves. Vance again. This is a three pointer knocked out of bounds for the long to the Lopes. That was a nice job defensively by two bigs playing together. Vance forced to another outside shot. And Oscar Frere won't get credit for a rebound in that play, but a really nice job blocking his man out on that weak side board so he couldn't get the ball. Russell came in there and got it hand off. Russell. Outside the arc, and Vernon to come out for support, moves to his right, goes up high off the glass, draws the foul, and gets the hoop in the arm. Well, that's one thing Russell's really added this year. When a big comes out to set a screen, he doesn't always use the screen. Sometimes he goes away from the screen, just uses his quickness. He catches the guard, taking a beat, finding where the big-bodied screen's going to be. Once they turn their head, he's beep, beep, and gone right to the basket. Saw the free throw percentage of 71 percent now 50 of 70. Nice job getting to the line a lot tonight. Just have to maximize his opportunities when he gets to that free throw percentage getting to rise. Russell reaching in on Mosby. Bounce pass inside to Johnson. Wow, he's picked off. No look. Russell. Oh, saw that coming. Lays it in nice and pretty. Johnson got careless with that basketball. You turned your eye. And, uh, on, on Russell, you turn your back on him there. He's going to take an opportunity to get a steal. Look at Fifi out here ball hawking. Mosby, a long three attempt up high. Rebound kicked out. That's going to be a battle underneath between Vernon Bern, and, and the big fellow. It's a heavyweight battle. Johnson, yeah. 18 and counting on the shot clock. Mosby motioning. Russell eyeing him. Tried to leave it. Oh, he had picked up the loose ball. Gave it back to Doolin. Mosby, 6 5, driving baseline. Floater in and out. Pulled down by Vernon. Russell pulls back down. Three attempt. Fifi's there, though. Finds an open lane to the left. Goes up high. Too heavy. Vance quickly up to Mosby. Vernon got a hand on the pass over to. Doolin goes out of bounds. Twice now GCU's gotten back in transition. Look at this one. He just turns his back, forgets all about Russell, because he thought his was gonna go with Russell was gonna go with his man to the corner. And Russell broke the playoff there. Look at he just gets out of his field of vision. He comes right back as soon as big fella puts the ball on the floor, snatches it away. Patterson and Reed back in for the Braves. Inbound. Into Mosby. Mosby down low. Johnson swarmed there by Martin and Vernon. Nowhere to go. Knocked out. Oh, it's going to belong to the Lopes. Good job by both Vernon and Martin, but Martin put the pressure on. Martin's got those athletic hands defensively. He swatted down on that ball, got right on top of it. They don't normally teach that. The officials think it's going to be a foul, but he's so accurate with it. He knocked it off of uh, Johnson's leg. Fifi looking for three. And do. 8-0 run for the Lopes. A nice job. Little skip pass. Mini skip pass. Finds a do in the corner. He likes that corner pocket. Three. Lopes storming back. To falling down. 5-0. In the corner. Johnson driving baseline. Just blows over Martin. Yeah, he's, he's too big to try to get by the quick feed of Martin. Does an excellent job sliding those biscuits, cutting that baseline drive off. Look at this one more time. Just so quick, beats him to the spot. Not 100% set, but 
When you get that contact between the four and the two like that, the officials will give you the benefit of the doubt every time. Johnson already with three turnovers. Wolves trying to build an 8-0 run the last two minutes of play. Wow, called on the Braves. Let's go back to that long range shot by Fifi. I do. I love this one right here. Just a, there's a quick skip pass by Russell. He skips. Passing the ball to Jared Martin and finds Fifi Adu in the corner. Defense doesn't have enough time to rotate. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, as you know, the, that GCU Lopes, they played down in Tucson playing University of Arizona. Sean Miller commending the team, saying they weren't doing this for a favor. They were doing this to help the Wildcats get better, which says a lot about what, how he respects this Lopes program. And then yesterday, the Lady Lopes, well, they played NAU. So it brings up this question that Richard Obert, who covers GCU, actually posed on Twitter. He works for AZ Central and AZ Republic. He said he believes that every year these Arizona schools should be playing each other. Obviously, we see the Wildcats and Sun Devils match up in Pac-12 play, but he said it would be great to see the likes of GCU playing each of those schools as well as NAU every year. Seems like it would be great pride for the state of Arizona, and we did see ASU last week play New Mexico State, so they are playing other whack opponents. So I just wanted to get you guys to weigh in on this. What do you think? Maybe we can change the schedules out there, right? What do you think about GCU playing the other Arizona schools? I absolutely love that idea, Kate. I floated on air the other day. Give a little four, four team mini tournament. I'd like NAU, GCU, Arizona, and Arizona State all to play one another. The only problem you would have to make sure that Arizona State and Arizona don't play each other. You have all teams together the same venue, but don't let them play each other because they're going to see each other in Pac 12 play twice already anyway, but I think the fans uh, in the state of Arizona would absolutely eat that up. It would be a smashing success. It'd be real hard to get a ticket to that one. Well, yeah, like a tip-off classic or something that, you know, college basketball fans throughout the state of Arizona could come out and support the collegiate teams in this state and really showcase college basketball in this state would be just terrific. We see it with Utah, right? We were talking before the, the broadcast that Utah schools do it. It's not like it would be something that, you know, Arizona would be special at. We see it across the country. Mm -hmm. I remember years back, the Philadelphia schools all did that. St. Joe's and Penn and Penn's. They all played one another. LaSalle, they all got together. They tried that high handoff they liked so much at a timeout, weren't able to convert. But uh, I think it's a fantastic idea. I, I think it's just a matter of time before that happens. Most behind by Russell, got some support by Vance. Foul called. I want to think they said he stepped on the sideline. Oh. Yeah. When he tried that killer crossover dribble to split the double team, that foot came back and he stepped on the sideline. So yet another turnover for this Alcorn State team. Montez Robinson, as I mentioned, in his second season, did a good job last year. 13 and 5 in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, finished 15 and 15 overall, up high for Fifi. <laughs> tried to push it back, rebound. His set play is not working early on here for GCU. They hold on to this three-point early lead. Patterson, Avery Patterson in the game from Decatur, Georgia. GCU started 0 for 2 to now 3 of 5 since. Inside, pulling through and not successful was Vance. Good job by Keontae Vernon getting that board in traffic. Martin. Short on the three, pulled down by the Braves. I like Martin taking that shot, though. Had a little pep talk from Coach Marley. Said, hey, it's time to start making those shots. Can't worry about that miss. Come back and fire the next one. Patterson drains the three. Coming in a 27% three-point shooter. Now 7 to 23. Yeah, but those statistics are misleading. This is a streaky team. If they're getting hot behind that arc, you got to run them off that arc. Mosby commits the foul. Russell's been so good this year. We talked about it earlier, how many attempts he gets from the free throw line. Just, just getting an edge, a crease, a crack, a crevice on a defender, then getting into their body, drawing that contact while he's in the shooting motion, getting to the line. And on top of that, he's done a much better job of finishing that contact, getting opportunities for three-point plays by getting body contact. Check that. The foul went to Reed. He'll take a seat on the bench. Back in is Johnson. And Russell connects. Oh, 
Seven points for Dwayne early on. Moves in on Mosby. Over to Vance. 6'7, 265. Far side, Tonneson. Hit a three over there. We got walk. Yep. Yeah. He wanted to he wanted to hit the man in the corner and he was well guarded. Didn't want to take a chance on that pass. By the time he found a teammate to pass the ball to, he slid that pivot foot. Officials are right on top of it. 14 minutes and counting opening half. Russell to Fifi. Moving on Patterson driving baseline underneath up high and in. Out with the afterburners on. Youngster, right. He certainly did. He showed that he was going to go middle and snapped it back to the left. So quick and so long. He got that ball up to the rim using the backboard. Got himself an easy two points. Mosby trying to move on Russell unsuccessful, but Johnson's all alone and hits. That's too easy right there. That's just Johnson popping up to that elbow. And I know Keontae Vernon doesn't want to leave the basket that much, but he's going to have to stay with Johnson. He's very capable of making a 16 to 18 foot jump shot. So that's got a hand on it temporarily. Russell, top of the key. High rebound, pulled down by Patterson. Patterson. Smeared by Vance, back out. Johnson's got an open look for three. Off to Mark. Martin to Russell. Up high. Vernon. Underneath. Got to be careful. Pushed out. It's going to belong to the Braves. A little risky on the pass. Yeah. This drive here by Fifi. See, that's another one. He's learning that one from Russell. He's pressure. He's learning quick. That guard comes out. The big man comes out to set that screen. The defensive player takes a peek over their shoulder, their left or right. As soon as they do that, the GCU players are taking off away from the screen and going to the basket. There's Robinson moving, Vance and Johnson in and out of the game. Vance takes a seat. Johnson wants Howard to move inside. Leaves it there for Denzel Doolin. Fifi's going to be called. Lane narrowed with Kerwin coming out. Wasn't a lot of room. Kerwin in for Keontae Vernon. Tyquelin Smith in for the Braves. Mosby to inbound, quickly to Howard. Howard turn around, not there. Martin pulls down the rebound. Up quickly to Freyer. Oscar Freyer! Oscar Freyer! That kid is a live wire on that wing. He's got good wheels. He's not afraid to use them. And boy, can he really skyrocket up to that basket and throw that ball down with authority. Smith. Leaves from Mosby, look for the return, but it was blocked by Smith. Johnson just inside the arc connects. Up over Jared Martin. Russell leaves it. Smith fouled underneath. Timeout on the floor, 11.54 to go. Opening half, the lead is two by GCU over Alcorn State. It's a loss. Try to win their seventh of the season. Keep it right here on CW6. It's that time again. Time to be thankful. Time to be with loved ones. A full calendar and a full plate. Family Christmas and family traditions. The years go by fast, and the holidays even faster. Now's the time to make room for what's really important giving back and going forward, building memories and creating a better future. This is your season. Seize it. GCU's online degree program puts you first, so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. GCU.edu. 
Grand Canyon men's basketball is brought to you by your Valley Hyundai dealers. For a limited time, every day is Black Friday. Shop by Hyundai.com today. And by Canyon State Credit Union. Committed to you. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth back at GCU Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. Be sure to get your GCU men's basketball tickets right now. They make great stocking stuffers, season single game tickets on sale. Just two more non-conference matchups left here at the arena. Plus some great WAC conference matchups starting in January. Utah Valley, New Mexico State, Seattle University, CSU Bakersfield all on the schedule. Great place to bring the whole family. Reserve your tickets now by contacting the GCU box office at 602-639-8979 or by going simply to lopestickets.com. So far early on, as you coach Marley, checking out that stat, she's probably looking at that all court state bench. He's got seven points. Uh, the GCU bench hasn't scored yet. I'll look Smith's going to fix that as he's got two shots for the free throw line, but I love the fact that GCU is getting in the paint. Eight to advantage points in the paint. Irwin turning up the success at the free throw line. Oh, can't get the bounce. Lead is three. Reese Howard. Reed for Johnson. Johnson to Mosby. Over to Reed. Reed inside for Johnson. Turn around. Short. Freyer. Russell. Russell moves. Dishes back out. Freyer beyond the arc. Ooh, misses off the mark. Look out inside. And Howard to bring it up after the save by Reed. Tyler Carter in the game for three. Carter with it now. Bounce pass. Turn around, short, good D by Kerwin. It was excellent D by Kerwin because he forced the man into a tough shot without fouling. Russell, Frayer, three, out. Smith there. There you got Kerwin yep. Smith underneath trying to get that offensive rebound. Didn't see what he did if he got an early pit and push, but oh yeah, early push, a little too much forearm shiver to the back. Coach Robinson very active with that bench in and out. Yeah, not afraid to substitute, is he? I, 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 that style. might work for his team. I don't know if I would like that as much as a play. You need four or five good minutes to really get into a rhythm. And he's really rotating those players in and out. Carter and Johnson take a seat. Newman back in. Vance in. Vance just inside the arc. Pulled down by Smith, and Russell has it. Vance made that early shot from the outside. He's missed his last three. Russell looks for three, way off the mark. Ooh. Ooh. Good thing we're here at GC Arena. <laughs> yeah, we would have earned a chance of air ball on that one. You don't see Russell's uh, shots go that awry. Might need a sight adjustment. Maurice Howard from Quincy, Florida. Vance to his left. Mosby. Bounce back. Dance. Smith working on him. Back out to Howard. Freshman. Averaging 5.2 points per game. Moving to his right. Smith there. Back out. Picked off by Jared Martin on the run. Jared Martin lays it in. Yeah. Ah, nice job by Jared Martin. Showing off for Mama right there. He's got a chance to talk to his mom before the game. That'll put a smile on mom's face. Oh, working hard is Vance. Not enough. Vance got those big, broad shoulders. He just uh, uh, oh, coming down God. the lane there. She struck the, DF, the GCU defense. And getting that guy's way. Freyer trying to move on Doolin. Doolin doing a good job over to Russell. Playing it tight. It's Howard. Smith tried to get some support. Martin. Down low, Fifi with a sweet move baseline. Oh, he can't get it up, but draws the foul. Uh oh, Fifi showed that three. He made the one outside shot, just throws the three. Look at this one here. Jared Martin just so quick. Best defender on the team. Smartest player on the court. Gets that steal, and then Fifi hit one that one three. Coach told him, hey, run him off that three. And Young Fellow does a nice job pulling that thing down and getting himself to the free throw line. I like that little 
LeBron James slash Michael Jordan hanging in the air to get that body contact. Hey, going back to Jared Martin's mom, I had a chance to talk to her before the game. I was saying, I asked her, I said, what was his favorite gift as a, as a kid growing up for Christmas? And she said, a surfboard. Ooh. Yeah, I guess you got to like to surf down there in uh, Manly, Australia, Sydney area. And then she also added that his favorite part of Christmas was the pudding and finding money. Is that a thing? Wow, I don't know if that's high Australia. money and pudding down I'm there. I'm all for that. Any chance you get a chance to get some dough, I'm yeah. all for that, right? A little uh, yeah. idea for parents out there. Yeah, then he just comes up with another rebound on this side. So he stuffed the stat sheet against Mississippi Valley State. He's doing it again here early for against another Mississippi team. More boards for Jared Martin. Long range three off. Doesn't go. Tip back. Unsuccessful by Kerwin Smith. That's something we should do with all these players, find out what their favorite gift was. Going into our next broadcast, we have some sort of idea what these guys like, what they're all about. I was, mine was a bike. That was my first real chance of three. You know, ride that bike off the street, off the block, out of the neighborhood, down the park. Uh, Schwinn. Could tell me nothing. Schwinn. Yeah. Yeah. I just win. Ourselves a ball game right here. Three point, one, one, one possession game with a little over eight minutes to play. And another turnover by the Lopes. Russ's pass picked off by Doolin quickly. Ooh, Aaron play by Wayne. Got yeah. getting a little lazy in there. Frustrated. Yeah, frustration foul right there. Maybe needed a little break. It's been going every minute of this basketball game so far. Probably just wanted to say, you know what, I got one to burn. We're not in the one and one the penalty situation. Just take a foul, slow him down. Let's regroup. Dillon inbound. Finds Howard. Howard back to Johnson. Johnson leads Dillon. Dillon trying to move on Freyer, muscling his way in there. Freyer's going to be called. That is a tough one to defend right there. Dillon lowering that shoulder in. Back out, Mosby, turn around, pulled down by Freyer on the air and shot. Russell moving in, moving to his right from Doolin. Leads him there for Howard. The whistles are going a plenty here. Reese Howard calling for the foul. Timeout on the floor, 7.50 to go, three point lead. 19 to 16 in favor of the Lopes. Both Russell and Adu with uh, seven points early on in this game, but back and forth it goes, and uh, the Braves, their rotation and their turnstile by Coach Robinson certainly uh, trying to keep some fresh legs out there with some big bodies. They're keeping some fresh legs out there. I don't know if GCU knows who they're supposed to guard. They guard one guy in a minute, next thing you know he's out of the game. So uh, they're, they're doing a really good job keeping this guy's fresh. There's no doubt about that. When you're at your sixth road game in a row, probably <laughs> Probably get some fatigue with road weary legs out there. He's trying to keep it fresh. But let's go back to a play between Keontae Vernon and Dwayne Russell, which I really love this one right here because you're going to see Russell. He's going to circle up here to the top and get the basketball. Keontae Vernon's going to come circle back and he's going to set a screen. But Russell decides, I'm not going to come off the screen traditionally with the basketball and take it to the hole. I'm going to go away from the screen, try to beat my man as my man's looking for to see which way the screen is really coming from. So Take a look at this one more time. See, he comes back up, calls for the screen, takes a quick look, and then he's gone to the basket, banks that one up off the glass. So a really nice job by, by Russell and Vernon working the two-man action. So the Lopes lead by three. They don't have an offensive rebound as of yet in this game. As the uh, Braves have some big bodies. Wow, look at that young loaf. What a good looking kid. Good looking kid good. there. He's got the headset on. He's probably tuned into our broadcast. Trying to <laughs> maybe hear Pete Longworth. How loud Whoa. it is here. Oh, He's no. digging for gold. He would say number one. He would say number, number one. Number one, that's right, yeah. That is a good looking young fan there. The last name of might be similar to Kate's. Yeah, yeah. Young Long, Longworth, first first GCU basketball game, I was told. So hopefully he will be lucky for the Lopes. Get a win tonight. 
Russell with that. Lopes beat Alcorn State last November, 79 to 46. Dwayne had 14 points on five of nine shooting in that game. GC has done well against the SWAC, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. They're a perfect 6 0 all time. I think they're doing well. It's straight the turnovers and getting points off of those turnovers. But six turnovers have led to nine GCU points tonight. Patterson, high by Shakkar now in the game. Back, Doolin looking for three. One of the rim, rebound put back there by Johnson. Not enough size on that glass there for. Reginald Johnson. They listed him at 260, but I'm telling you right now, he's probably a biscuit or two away from 275. That's a big young man. Nice layup for Dwayne. Looks like kind of came up a little hobbled. He's he's in pain. Oh, you don't like to see this. I don't know if it's a cramp or he just landed wrong. He's definitely hobbled right now. You can see it on his face. He's grimacing. Oh, not sure. He's looking to the bench right now. No, he has had those cramping issues in the past. Oh, he's in pain. He's stiff. I don't know if it's that left leg or trying to make a play. Oh, look at that leg. It's just dragging. Oh, couldn't wait for a whistle. Fifi's going to come in. I'll take a look at Russell driving to the basket one more time. Let's see if he comes down funny on that ankle. No, it didn't look like he. King down funny on his ankle unless something just got jammed. He may just be cramping up. He's got that walk like he's trying to fight a cramp from getting too too tight. Doesn't see anything twist. Jody Hackett has been busy all season. He certainly training. has. That dude earns his pay. All the injured bodies over there. Got five guys in Hoodie's last game. Same five guys in street clothes tonight. Oh, Fifi looked like the no look and picked off by Patterson trying to get it over to Freyer. He's got his own rebound after the miss. Vance driving, twisting, turning. Kick back out. Patterson driving baseline. Underneath, bounce pass. Kicked out. Vance pulled down, then he shoots and drains it. Wow. Vance with his second three point shot tonight. Jack Carr to his right, back out Jared Martin, moves to his left, leads for Fifi, Fifi in the paint, back out, Jack Carr. Foul on the Braves. Yeah, they got, uh, Fifi Fifi got in there awfully deep, and they got a foul on Mosby down there. I think he stepped in and tried to take a charge, but they're going to say he whistled for the blocks. Even though Mosley, he steps up, and oh yeah, you can see that his feet or foot was in the restricted area. So you can't take a charge down that low close to the basket to protect the offensive player from being undercut. Now you're going to get whistled every time once you get some uh, body parts in that area. One area Fifi has looked strong now. 15 of 17 from the line came in 88 percent. Free throw line. Yeah, that, that is strong for a freshman. You, know, you think about one, you're playing harder, you're a little more fatigued. Two, you're probably nervous early in the first half of the season. And, you know, he doesn't get there a lot per game, but when he does, he, he knocks them down. Russell and Fifi, 20 points, 9 of 9 from the free throw line. Vance driving, turning, twisting, swatted away, knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to the Braves. Well, big brother Darian Clark just went back there and looked at his little man, Russell. I, I can now see that head athletic trainer Jordy is uh, wrapping, rewrapping Dwayne Russell's ankle. Looks like he's rewrapping his right ankle, so maybe he did just kind of tweak an ankle, which, in all honesty, could be better than just the cramping as it allowed him. Get a little bit of support on that day for he'll feel confident to be able to play after he gets it taped up nice and tight. Juwan Henderson in the game, but Johnson's three-point attempt is short. Shaq Carr to his right. Freyer driving up high. And good defensive play there by Doolin. 
Yeah, Frere was moving so fast. We talk about how quickly he likes to get out in the wing. Unfortunately, he was not able to knife by the defender. You can see he takes that square in the chest there. And Frere gets, he knew it right away. Got Wilson for the charge. A lot of turnovers this first half for the Lopes. Fifi almost picked the pocket of Patterson. Patterson on the move. Patterson leaves. Vance. Pass Patterson. Marley said he was out, didn't see it. Oh, Patterson oh. nails it. Nice play by the big man, though, because defense came over and helped, and he found Patterson on that baseline. He's got himself just a two-point game. Bounce pass, Martin out to Freyer. Freyer wants three. Short, off the mark, Doolin and Keontae. Doolin comes up with it. Juan Henderson in the game. Uh, you beat a team as badly as the low speed. The Braves last year, you know they're going to come back fighting mad this year, and they certainly have in this first half, so that they are up for the contest. Vance off the ball, 10 on the shot clock, driving by Keontae Vernon, muscles his way there. It bowls over Jared Martin. There's really not much Jared could do. He draws the foul. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, zero the hero, that being, of course, Dwayne Russell, came down on somebody else, which um, in turn resulted in a turned ankle. They're calling it a mild ankle sprain right now. He is over here right now walking on it. He was sitting over there pretty gingerly as they were taping him up, but once it was all taped up and stabilized, he's looking good, and he just walked right in front of me onto the court, and they say they hope he will be re-entering the game. Oh, that's great news. Thanks, Kate. Kate spent way too much time by the trainers for uh, uh, the season. Not that we don't like talking about Jordy Hackett. But... Good to see Dwayne back on the bench. Martin bounce pass. Fifi, top of the key. Pulls back just inside the arc. Too heavy. They just can't hit from long distance. Now struggling shooting that basketball tonight. Just 7 of 21 from the field, shooting 33% out there. And that's not going to get it done. I mean, you know you got some points off your steals, but not getting, not getting anything out of your half-court offense tonight. Long three attempt pulled down by the Lopes. Russell's at the scorer's table. Great to see. Shaq almost got his pocket pick. Timeout on the floor. The lead is just one for GCU. 3.22 to go. Opening half. Keep it right here on CW6. I'm Taylor, and I'm getting my Bachelor's of Science degree in Marketing from GCU. Moving on campus was one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all of the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already. And what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. You're watching GCU Hoops here on the CW, and it's a one-point game. Lopes on top of the Alcorn State Braves. All right, well, the Lopes want this W, although it's non-conference action. They're hoping these games build up their strength and confidence as they head into WAC play. Let's take a look at how the conference is shaping up. New Mexico State coming off that win against the Sun Devils over the weekend. Most recently, they beat UC Irvine for an 11-2 record. They have won nine straight. 
on a three game winning streak is CSU Bakersfield. They're eight and four. Seattle U at seven and five. They've won their last four. And then you see Grand Canyon University with a six and five record right in the middle of the pack at four. UMKC behind them with a seven and six record. Utah Valley at the 500 mark. UTRGV, they lost their last game, bringing their record down to five and nine. And Chicago State has lost their last five. Their overall record right now, three and nine. Again, we know the goal of this season for Dan Marley and his team is to take that WAC conference. So that's what the competition is looking like. Russell gets taped up, takes a shot off the mark, pulled down by Patterson. Yeah, it's important these last three minutes here for the Lobe State. Get some good momentum going into the locker room. Johnson takes the feed from Patterson. Braves sporting some smiles are looking good. The Lopes without a field goal over the last 352. Only two assists so far in the game. Yeah, Reginald Johnson, he's playing to play four or seven from the field. He's got himself eight points and four boards. Henderson trying to find his way through at 5'7, 140 with Keontae Vernon. And Good work there by Kerwin Smith. Yeah, Bogo stick legs, Kerwin Smith. I think Shaq Carr giving him credit too. He got down there and fought for that board. And he didn't get it cleanly to Kerwin Smith. We got it close enough to him where Smith can go grab it, snatch that thing out of the air and left up real quick. And see, look at that. The Shaq Carr down there. He tries to find it back to Kerwin. He gets it close enough to him and just got right into the body there. Couldn't get the three point play to go. One point Lopes lead. Anderson brings it up. Great bench outscoring the Lopes 13 to 1. They did well against Georgia Tech as well. Braves in there. Game against Georgia Tech. Vernon had to pick the pocket. Hand on it. Pulled down by Kerwin Smith. Shaq Carr run a point, let Russell play the two. Back to Martin, careful. Russell, top of the circle. Moves to his right, goes up high, swatted away by Brewer. Look out, 6'8", 260. Shaq Carr, back, Vernon. In an area where, whoa, his practice is, uh, we are seeing results. Yeah. That is extra time, kids. Yeah, you, you put in the practice. It's wow. nice to see a kid work on another aspect of his game that he realized was lacking. That 16 to 18 foot jump shot. So a lot more confidence on stroking it now. This is hard work. Extra time. Staying after practice. I've seen it. A year ago, I don't know. That was even a 50-50 shot at going in. Now Reginald Johnson, he continues the hot hand. Give him five field goals on the evening for 10 points. Russell takes it from Carr. Moves out front against Brewer. No look pass underneath. Kerwin Smith. Oh, the K-Train. Run one right down the left side of there. Such a good pick. And then moves to the basket. Russell's really finding Smith and Vernon and Clark when he's out there really well on those Pick and roll situations. Anderson leaves for Johnson. Johnson to Doolin. Doolin stopped there by Martin. Pushing Martin back. Did Martin get called? He did. Ooh, he tough. did. Yeah, he just Second. put the pressure on him. I think it was much, much like Vance did earlier on the pick and roll. But this is one, this is another one here. Look at that. Just kind of a shuffle pass almost there. Slide of hand there by Russell. Wasn't even looking at Smith. Did he right where the big guy can catch it though, you know, not down below his, you know, his knees and not way up out of his head, above his head where he's got to regather. He catches it right just above his waistband. It's easy for Smith to go up and flush it. They gave that foul to Keontae Vernon his first. He's got a hand in there somewhere. I didn't see it, but uh, probably better than Martin getting his second. Martin pulled it down, leaves for Carr. 45 seconds and counting opening half. Two point lead for the Lopes. We talked about the 20 point beat down the Lopes gave the Braves last year. I didn't see this close a game tonight. The record's just two and seven coming in here. The way the Lopes have been playing. Tired team, six straight road game. I thought GC would take a double digit lead to the half. Johnson called for the foul on Kerwin Smith. They just went cold here. They met able to get. A lot of buckets inside most of this first half. They've been firing away from the outside. Just 
one of eight from behind the arc. Vance comes in for Johnson. Smith was so good for the line against Mississippi Valley State. He was 4 of 4. I just thought that was going to be the trend because he's got a decent looking stroke. I thought that was going to be the start of something good for this young man, but he's been unable to be consistent from that free throw line. Two point attempt. Yeah, they didn't give Vance that body contact nice. there. I thought he got really into Keontae Vernon. I they were going to get a call there by officials. Maybe a little home cooking there because Keontae Vernon certainly got some contact underneath Vance. Time out on the floor, 18.3 on the clock. 32 29 is the score. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for men's basketball and GCU. Arkansas Pine Bluff coming in on Thursday. Cal Poly on the 28th. Then the team travels to Riverside on New Year's Eve. And then January 7th, WAC conference play begins. Utah Valley, Coach Pope, some transfers from BYU, a much improved team. Then a trip to New Mexico State. I'm sure some Havocs will make their way to New Mexico. UTRGV on the road, San Diego Christian, Seattle back here. And then uh, at UMKC and at Chicago State. Yeah, my old teammate, Mark Pope, bringing his team in here. They've been playing some good basketball. You mentioned that big win over BYU that they had. Russell goes right, Shaq Carr, eight on the clock. Martin, six, up high. Vernon Owens just can't grab it. Dula got a hand on it. Back underneath. Long shot. Off the top of the backboard by the Braves. Uh, yeah, Lopes 32 29 in a pretty hard fight opening half. The Braves came to play. They want to finish their six game road trip with a victory. Yeah, they didn't like that 20 point beatdown they got last time they were in here. They are battling tough. Let's send it over to Kate. All right, thank you guys. Well, Coach, I know this is a little bit closer than you'd want at halftime, but what stands out on the positives that you see from your team so far this first half? Uh, Dwayne didn't break his ankle, he just twisted it. Uh, he had to go out there. And we have a hard time scoring. Nobody's shooting the ball. We got to be more aggressive, taking it to the basket. Got to be stronger. Our big guys got to be stronger down there, finishing. Got to make our free throws to start off making them. Uh, we just got to take the ball to the basket. Nobody's shooting the ball well. Uh, Dwayne's hobbling around, so we just have to win it on the defensive end and hopefully get out and run and get some easy baskets. What's it take for a team in the second half mentally to go out there and really set that tone when your opponent sometimes can be an underdog like this and surprise? Well, I hope the fear of losing. I mean, uh, tomorrow off or tomorrow not off. Uh, you know, we just got to find a way to win. We are, we're shorthanded. Uh, we're not very good right now, so we just got to battle. I told the guys before the game, just find a way to win. All right, well, we wish you the best luck in the second half. Dan Marley certainly looking for a pep talk for his team as he heads into the break with this one a lot closer than I know Lopes fans want him and certainly Dan Marley. Well, it's a matter of having a day off or not. Go Christmas shopping. Russell and Adu, 20 points combined, 9-9 nine and nine from free throw land. And Jared Martin has seven rebounds. The Lopes lead it 32-29. to 29. We'll be back with more of our halftime festivities with Kate here at GCU Arena. We'll keep it right here. Our company is the Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype, and we came up with with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. 
college, you can see the community thriving along with GCU. And just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope and I, and I tell it to everyone, like go to GCU, Lope's up. I'm very, very proud. Welcome back. It is a close one here at GCU Arena tonight. You're watching Men's Division I College Hoops on the CW6. The Lopes up 32-29 over Alcorn State. And right now, uh, you know, Dan Marley's addressing the team. He's trying to take this one serious. But out here on the court, it's nothing but fun. You were just seeing the superstars having some fun here at halftime. And carrying on the theme of who brings spirit and fun into this arena, I welcome in now Jackie Janung Cook, the GCU dance coach here. It's always so fun to see you guys out there and I know around the holidays you've got some special spirited dances out there, performances. Just take us through what's been going on this year and some of your big accomplishments for the team. This year's been so exciting. Um, we went to camp this year and won every award we could have worn at camp which was um, a big accomplishment for us and really exciting to start this year off and this year has just been um, a really fun one to do as a coach because the girls are awesome, they're talented, they're sweet, they're great students. It's just been a very fun year. And you guys made things happen when you guys were at Nationals last year. You guys had great performances. So now as you prepare for it, what are some of the challenges, some of the differences from last year to this year? Um, well, this year is our last year competing in the D2 category. Wow. So we're hoping to go in and just, you know, make our name before moving up to D1 nationally. And so we've kind of stepped up our game with both of our routines, our jazz routine and our hip hop routine. And so working really hard on it. We've learned them um, early on in the season. I've been just cleaning them all year long and so hope to do well in January. And then as you prep for 2017, but as you just mentioned, as you look ahead to taking that step and that final transition to Division One, what are you anticipating for the dance team in the future? Um, well, I mean, it's a big year for us to transition into the D1 um, division. And so um, just looking for some um, athletes that are really wanting to come in and work hard and, um, you know, really represent GCU. So uh, it's, it's a big step, but we're really excited, and I think we're really ready for it. So thank you so much, Jackie, for joining us. And congratulations, because this year you guys have been getting a lot of accolades just on Twitter and by word of mouth. A lot of people complimenting not only the Havocs, but the coordination that the dance team, the cheer, and the band have. They're really taking the opponent out of the game. So I know it helps the guys on the court. It's so much fun. All right. Well, enjoy yourself. Best of luck at Nationals and have a happy holiday. And we'll be right back here with more GCU Hoops on the CW6. Barry and Scott back with highlight stats and more. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Back on the campus, Grand Canyon University, where the Lopes lead Alcorn State 32 to 29. Barry Butel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here in Phoenix, Arizona, in a tight game, which the uh, Lopes well, they got a bit of a scare there. Dwayne Russell kind of tweaked that ankle, got it wrapped up by Jordy Hackett back in the game. Uh, they can ill afford to have another player go down with an injury. 
you cannot afford to lose to Wayne Russell. I mean, you can cancel the rest of the non-conference season Whoa. if uh, Russell goes down because they just got too many banged up bodies over there. He's been, you know, the third leading scorer in the nation and everything to this team. Alcorn went out to a 5-0 start in the game before the Lopes got on the board. It's time for our halftime highlights brought to you by Hyundai. Shop by Hyundai.com today. How about the steal by Russell? Well, I love this one right there. That's just being a crafty basketball player and defense. The offense has got player Tanner back on there. He takes it coast to coast very easily. I love that skip pass to a do in the corner. He knocked down the only three-point shot the Lopes had, just one of eight shooting in that first half from the behind the arc and then Patterson quick ball swing swing and Patterson rips the cords on that one he had a nice first half and then Johnson he really came to play he had two uh, he had not the long two rather than that was Martin there jumping at pass lane. I think we showed that one a couple times so smart and then Russell here this is where Dan Marley's heart leapt up into his throat when he comes down there limping but he was okay after a new tape job by Jordy Hack and then Vance knocked down the second of two three-point shots, and I love that one by Curlin Smith. He's got all six of the Lopes points off the bench, and they're really getting busted on that bench there. 17 to six disadvantage points in the paint. Lopes did a nice job early. They had eight of those 16 in the first six minutes, just eight the rest of the way after that. They have got to go inside and get some points in that paint because they're shooting just 35 percent from behind the arc. That's yeah. not going to get it done. Yeah, 72 to six, the margin for the Braves. And as Coach Marley talked to Kate at the halftime. They've got to improve their shooting. They've got to get some some players to step up and that being maybe Jared Martin and some other guys to contribute. Yeah, you know, Jared Martin's got to make shots and I think what he should learn to take away from last game. It doesn't have to be the three point shot right. driving that ball to the basket. He's very crafty getting in there getting stuff foul getting to that free throw line. You know, he can he can knock down shots from the free throw line as well. And I love when that little skip pass mm -hmm. to Fifi Oscar Frere. Oscar's been known to have better second halves than first half, so look for him to get himself going. Well, you know one thing, Coach Marley's definitely uh, having a say in that locker room. We'll see how they respond in the second half, but we'll have Kate returning in just a moment here from the GC Arena with the Lopes on top over the Braves, 32-29 on CW6. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting edge next generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Canyon University. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at LopesTickets.com. All right, welcome back. A live look inside GCU Arena where we're just moments away to getting the second half underway. Dan Marley hoping his team able to step it up, really set the tone out there right now. It's only 32-29 over Alcorn State. And leading the way for the Lopes, Zero the Hero, despite playing on a bummed ankle, he did suffer from a light ankle sprain in the first half, but managed to get 11 points. Fifi with nine points. Kerwin Smith off the bench, taking all the bench points for GCU with six points. As you see Jared Martin there with two points, but he does have seven boards. So if he can get that shot going, that would be good things for the Lopes. Meanwhile, on the other side for Alcorn State, Johnson leading the way with 10 points, Vance with nine, and Patterson five, Howard with two. Who will come out in the second half? Well, only time will tell. Right now, it's a three-point game. We'll see who pulls away in the second half. We'll be back with more 
Globes basketball here on the CW6. Barry and Scott got you covered for the second half, so sit tight. We'll be right back. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting edge next generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Christmas from Grand Canyon University. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. Barry Bittell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth here from TCU Arena in Phoenix with the Lopes up by three over the Alcorn State Braves. Without that guy in the lineup, boy, you, uh, you'd be... Uh, You'd be dealt a big blow as he played 16 minutes in that opening half at 11 points with the lead, third leading scorer in the nation, Dwayne Russell. It went down with that ankle tweak, got it rewrapped and back in the game. Yeah, happy to see uh, Russell back out there. Seems to be moving good. I was kind of watching him here at halftime. He's kind of trying to, you know, step on the toe, step on the heel, work it around a little bit. But doesn't seem to be bothered by it too much and that's just that one we saw at the halftime highlight there just so crafty at reading the offensive player turning his back and stealing that ball that's the one where he goes off opposite the screen uh, just the smartest player you can see he's in some real pain right there maybe a little upset because it didn't seem like he landed on another player's foot just kind of landed awkwardly and Lovely comes back in there, fires a strike to Kerwin Smith. And Smith was like me when I played. I needed to be force fed by quality point guards, <laughs> John Baggs and Sam Cassell and sort of those guys. Armstrong. And then these guys are force feeds you right around the basket. All you have to do is make sure it didn't hit you in the mouth. Go up and dunk it. Kerwin Smith, 12 minutes of action, six points in that opening half. You notice I left Allen Iverson out. Yeah, you left a few people out. <laughs> Allen Iverson, he'd rather jack it up from about 35 feet than risk basket it to me. Sounds a little bitter. Oh, I'm bitter. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Got a nice jacket. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, he did get a nice jacket, didn't he? Yeah. He averaged 30 points a game on 30 shots, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, GCU, they better be, as the Thunder Dance, I'm sure, came out in uh, Coach Marley there at, at halftime in the locker room, and all of a sudden I see Dwayne Russell trotting away from us, not looking like his move is too good on that ankle. Oh, no. Vance driving on Martin. Fifi got a hand on it, picked up by Russell. Fifi takes it. Right hand, sweet move off the glass. That's where they need to grow roots. Continue that attack to that painted area. All of the second half. Bucket should be coming inside. Reed, near side, Mosby. Mosby moving in to the paint. Aaron shot, loose ball. Frayer's going to hand it over to Russell. And Russell's on one leg. He, he, normally, there's no way Mosby would get by Russell uh, on the defensive end, but he's just not able to push off of that foot. Vernon comes out. Russell Fifi tries the three. 
good! Yeah. Fifi! Well, Fifi said, okay, if you're not gonna guard me, I guess I'll shoot it, but it didn't seem like he was reluctant at first to take that shot. Braves counter with the three of their own from Yale and Reed. No, Reed, he had all day to shoot that one. He, don't get a hand in the player's face and just tempt him to shoot it. It's just a long free throw from right up on the top of the circle like that. Bounce pass at the leg of Eulen, but somehow ends up in Freyer's hands. Freyer's shot is short. He's going to have to start driving that ball to the hole. His outside three's not there. Carter shot misses. Russell pulled it down. Good D by Freyer. In the corner. Fifi pulls down the three. Back out Russell. He's got an open look for three. Short rebound. Loose ball. Who's it belong to? Yeah. Sometimes you wonder if that ball's round and it's so great. The funny bounces that it will take off a of player's hands, knees, ankles, and everything else. But look at this one here. Russell can't turn the corner, and Fifi says, I'm gonna swing this basketball and realizes there's nobody to swing it to because there's nobody guarding me, so I might as well shoot it. Martin to Russell. Russell to his left. Freyer looks inside quickly to Martin. Martin turning in the paint. Stops. Pushes back out to Russell. Russell with a floater. Too heavy. Pulled down. My Eulen. He's Eulen. trying to gut it out out here. Russell's struggling and getting down in transition, getting back in transition. Eulen leads to Patterson. It's almost like he's dragging that ankle with him. Patterson. Doolin driving. Freyer called for a foul. First team foul of the second half. That's a similar foul that Oscar got in the first half on a, on a driver. He's going to have to get learn to give a little bit more of a cushion on those drivers so they can't get that body contact off the first or second dribble. Third on Freyer. Mosby to Doolin. Doolin moving on, Freyer stop and pop. That time gave a little too much of a cushion, and Doolin rose right up over the top, knocked it down. Nice play by that young man. Lead is three for GCU. Doolin looks a little bit fatigued. Russell wanted him to move. He takes the bounce pass, drives in the paint, goes high off the glass, doesn't go, but Keontae Vernon puts it on. Keontae Vernon living on the glass right there. Nice, strong, smart, heady play. Following the driver to the basket and cleans up the, the mess. Dylan driving. Draws the foul. Looks like Freyer picked up his fourth. I uh, forget sometimes he's had such a nice first half to his freshman year that he is just a true freshman. And he's gotten burned on those drives a few times tonight. And see Dwayne Russell just. I think he thinks his body's going to be in one position because it's used to it, and then it's not quite where he wants it to be. His shot's just a little off, the floater's a little off, and that time the layup was just a, a little off. Vernon with a rebound. Hands trying to muscle his way towards the bucket. Russell on the run, dishes back out, shot car. Wow, hold on. They get Russell, Russell on that one? Yeah. Yeah, they got Russell in there. I'll tell you what, this Braves team, much like this Lopes team, is not afraid to give up their body and step in front of drivers to try to take those charges. So, I'm going to look at this one one more time. I just kind of looking at my head down, looking at notes, and Russell had given that basketball up, but he, he can't stop on that ankle. He don't want to put that pressure on it, so his body momentum continued right on in, drew the charge. Second on Dwayne. Five point GCU lead. Picked up by AJ Mosby. Which inside. Del Dillon. Fifi on him. Trying to back in. Turns towards the basket. Vernon with the rebound. Dante Vernon doing a good yeah. job here in the early second half. He's got five boards now. Big bounce pass. Not there. Russell is. Puts it back and quickly hobbling on that ankle again. That is hurting. Well, 
that's what they need. They need buckets inside. Push that advantage. There was oh, almost get the turnover. Do get the turnover. How about Keontae Vernon? You were reaching there by Doolin. Vernon's been active here in the second half. A little slowish first half for Keontae. I'm sure that halftime talk by Coach Marley put a little fire in Keontae Vernon. He has come out, put his hard hat, and brought his lunch pail to the court. 15-50 on the clock. Seven-point Lopes lead over the Braves from Alcorn State. Let's send it over to Kate. All right, guys. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about how fun it would be to see the different Arizona teams going up against each other in college basketball. Well, the Lady Lopes, well, they already got a head start on that. Yesterday in a matinee, they went up against NAU. Let's take a look at how they fared because it was a big one for those in the GCU uniform. This was their first meeting since 1993. Leading scorer and rebounder Marina Laramie looked on from the second row with a foot injury. This is the second game she missed, but her teammates stepped up especially junior Jessica Jaluski. She closed the gap at the half to three, and then the second half, it was all Jess. The Aussie native put up a career-high 31 points off the bench to lead the Lopes to a 76-65 come-from-behind win. They're fourth in a row, and it raised their home record to an impressive 6 and one. Their lone loss is to a nationally ranked Washington. And checking out these numbers, Casey Rarick with 17 points. Bree Mobley in her first game for the Lopes this season, six points, 11 boards. And with numbers like this, you can imagine it was a happy Trent May after the game. The girls did a great job tonight stepping up. We've, we've had so many different starting lineups and different rotations. I'm just really proud of their effort, proud of what they're just giving on a daily basis. I couldn't be more proud of the staff. Um, all that they're doing, so it was a great win today. We've, we're on a streak right now, and it doesn't matter who's, who's getting it done. Our girls step up and get it done. Great to see the team coming up so strong like that. And, guys, I think they're already setting the precedent, right? They're going up against NAU. I think that if our plans follow through for the Arizona teams playing each other, I think that the women's team, they're ready to go. And we're excited, too, because in the new year, we'll be, of course, broadcasting some of those games for the Lady Lopes. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I say we need to go scout them in Hawaii on this road trip yeah. that they're doing so we can prepare for the upcoming games in the new year. They're going out there on the 28th to play Chaminade in Hawaii. Uh, we've got we've to ramp up some of the scouting. Come on, Barry. Seems only Make that happen. Picked off by Howard. Howard up high. Doesn't go. Martin. He rushed the layup. Nice job by that kid getting a steal, but he rushed his layup. Just is out. Russell for three. Bam! Basket's going to count, and I think they got a foul underneath on the rebound there. Yeah, Maurice. Yeah, they're going to get one, gonna get one shot, I think, to Keontae Vernon. He was trying to box out big Keontae Vernon underneath there, just pushed him in the back. So, oh, I, I thought he was going to shoot a free throw. I take that back. It's going to be baseline out of bounds. And this is where the Lopes are deadly with these baseline out of bounds plays. Martin for Russell. We're content just to set it up from the top for this time. Maybe with Russell's bad wheel, they didn't want to risk anything. But Vernon in the second, two points, three rebounds, one steal, and just over four minutes of play. Vernon! Oh, doesn't put it there! Come on, that would have been a perfect exclamation point on that stat. Vance underneath. Vernon's going to be called for the foul. Yeah, his sack, and he had to give that foul. He was so far underneath the basket. Vance does a nice job in transition, getting ahead of Vernon as he tried to recover. He knew he had to commit the foul rather than give up the easy two points. Now, that's an, uh, that's a, an example of a good foul. You know, I always say a foul is not necessarily a mistake, but Vernon does sometimes get the, the cheapy kind of calls that, you know, are too far away from the basket, don't really mean anything, but that's a good foul. He, he had right there. Of course, Barry, you do know the all-time leader in the Atlantic Coast Conference in fouls? Hmm. Who would that be? Yeah. Would he play at North Carolina? Yours truly. Wow, you've got to be so okay. proud. You know what? You're going to do something. Do it right. <laughs> I was pretty good at it. The good thing was, though, I didn't foul out of very many games over my four-year career, but I was a smart basketball player. I knew how to use them and when to use them. Because that's what I tell my kids. Rich Reed, our producer, is asking how far back do we have to go for? 
What, what, what do you mean exactly? That's held up for a long time, saying that. Oh, that, that record may never be broken. I'm proud of that. Yeah. Man, yeah. That's the 1990. That's what it we're going six years now, right? Yeah, baby. Not that far. No way. <laughs> Where did those years go? Patterson. Oh, a little backboard help. Most of them went to my waistline, Barry, but that was a nice shot there by Patterson. He's knocked down a couple now from long range. That's just what I was going to say, the Lopes had a double digit advantage. Look to deal with it. Patterson says no. Single digits. Martin, long three, hits the front of the rim. I think Big Johnson got away with a walk. His teammate knocked him off balance. Vance tries the three. That's pulled down by Vernon. Another rebound. Of course, Keontae Vernon's doing all the work on the glass right now. He's He's missing Darian Clark, but he's doing his job getting those boards. Ooh, bad pass by Russell. Seven rebounds for Keontae Vernon. Vance called for the foul. He's going to check out. Coming in is Devin Brewer. So Vance goes out 6'7, 265, and Brewer comes in at 6'8, 260. There's some big bodies coming up, come off that bench. We talked about Johnson is 265. And I come back with another wide, wide body. And the funny thing is that they're not their wide bodies that take up a lot of space, but they're not real shot blockers. You can't get inside against them. Russell tried to float her off the mark, left his hand. You could see it. Mosby. Junior from Cartersville, Georgia. Leaves it for Johnson. Johnson out of Patterson. Patterson looking inside. Bounce pass. Dillon came out to pick it up. Over to Mosby, near side. Side by Russell. Moves to his left. Up high, rebound. Pulled down by Mosby. Fresh 30. Dillon's going to drive. Just back out. Johnson's there. Now Mosby goes up high. Not there. Rebound. Vernon knocks it around. Braves are all over it. Who's going to end up with it? Whoa. Well, oh, Vernon's about the only person down there working that glass. He had three attempts to get it. He couldn't quite get it, but that hard work paid off as GCU's going to get the ball on the side. They brought uh, Keontae, excuse me, uh, Kerwin Smith back in here to give Vernon a little help on the glass. Well, they got to stop play here. Martin is like bleeding in the bleeding mouth, in the mouth there. I mean, what's, I what's the busted deal? his lip or got a. Loose too. Even Coach Robinson was telling the officials. He doesn't want to come out of this game. He's trying to keep, trying to keep his mouth closed. Don't call Dave Vernon. Don't don't, don't call, cause attention to it. <laughs> keep my right. mouth closed. They won't know. I won't have to come out of the game. Rahman Katumbusi. Now they are working on it. Yeah, that Jordy Hackett over there put on the purple glove and dabbed him clean. So he looks like he's good to go now. Gonna have a big old fat lip. Mom's gonna have to put some money in the footy. <laughs> yeah. Poor kid. Russell waiting patiently. Oh, it does. Oh, no help from the rim. Pulled down by Reed. Yeah, iron on time. That was a good looking shot. It's just a tight rim. Patterson just inside the arc, off the wing. Pulled down by Johnson. Now Vernon's going to be called. Reginald Johnson doing his work early on that weak side board. Got Keontae Vernon in a bad way. Pushed up underneath the rim. Didn't have to jump very high to it once he established that kind of position, but he was quick back up off the floor when he. Did secure the rebound and got it to Vernon's body. Keontae has three personal fouls. These Braves just won't go away. Lopes opened up that 10 point lead. The Braves come right back and a chance to cut it to five. And they do. You saw the stat line 12 points now, seven rebounds for Johnson. Five point lead inside to Vernon from Russell. Vernon Turner. Looking to his right, feed it right back to Dwayne. Dwayne drives up over high. Tried to get up over Katambusi, but he stopped it. Russell pushes back out. Martin knocked off the Braves. And uh, Coach Robinson's upset at one end because 
Martin slammed into one of his guys and Coach Marley's upset at the end of it because he thought Russell was taken down on his drive but the officials are calling it consistent at both ends they're, they're letting these two teams play now that's what I like it let them play the young men that are growing big and strong let them bang these bodies out there away from the play AJ Mosby called his third. 15 foul inbound from Martin to Vernon. To Russell, tied by Patterson. Two Braves make their way over to the scores table. How about the Braves that came out in a little 1 2 2 zone here? Quickly inside. Kerwin Smith just can't gather it up. Fouls called on Johnson. Yeah, I think Johnson got a piece of the ball and a piece of Smith's arm. and. Kerwin was, wasn't able to keep control to slam it through. Third personal on Johnson. Time out on the floor. 11.49 to go in this second half. Located 44-39. Leave it locked in right here on CW6. It's that time again. Time to be thankful. Time to be with loved ones. A full calendar and a full plate. Family Christmas and family traditions. The years go by fast. And the holidays, even faster. Now's the time to make room for what's really important. Giving back and going forward building memories and creating a better future. This is your season. Seize it. GCU's online degree program puts you first so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. gcu.edu. Welcome back. We've got ourselves a nail biter here at GCU Arena. Just a five point game, but Lopes are on top over all corn state here on the CW6. And what you're looking at right now is what our esteemed producer, Rich Reed, calls the match unit. That's right. That's what happens when you have more guys in street clothes than in uniform. It's obviously not what you want, not ideal. And as uh, the Lopes trainer, Jordy, has put it to me that uh, you're just talking about, hey, what you see is what you get, because that's what's out on the court right now. But I had a chance to spend some time with him today before the game about how tough his his job is because normally he's maybe dealing with one or two guys rehabbing coming along. Well, right now he is dealing with more players than the six other coaches combined are dealing with guys who could start. So basically people who are playing the game have one on one coaching and Jordy's in charge of all the injured. So right now he has each of the players who are injured on their individual rehab schedules. They're doing their own workouts. But he said the one thing that does help when you have so many players out a lot of encouragement happening. They're really helping each other along, but he said his uh, greatest challenge is he doesn't want to push anyone back too soon just because you're outnumbered out there and you really want to get guys back on the court. That's yeah, a tough, tough dilemma to be in. You want them back if they do come back to be 100% healthy. Well, that was that shot, though, I mean, with Josh, Matt, Rubicar, Darian Clark, Kenzo Noodle, Noodle all. In street clothes, that's that's tough. Yeah, and you can believe, and the, and the Lopes have a winning record. Yeah. With, with all those guys hurt, in, in the quality of teams that they have played. Yep, knocked off San Diego State. Vance bumping into Martin, battling underneath. Kerwin Smith says, "Get away." Kerwin Smith basically just strolled down the lane and said, "I'll take that." Enough of this nonsense. Russell, Fifi Adu. To his left, looks right. Martin for three. Oh, off the mark. Rebound underneath. Kerwin Smith tried to come up with it. He, got, he did come up with it. Ker, uh, Kerwin Smith doing a good job gaining opportunities to go to the free throw line. However, just two of seven from the free throw line. He's got to make a couple here. Send it back over to Kate. Well, guys, we were just talking about some of the injured folks, and I know a lot of us have noticed uh, Kenzo Nudo just at practice. He's been standing out running the bleachers. He's been very strong, very fast. We've seen him before games out there shooting. So you think he's coming along. But one thing Jordy told me is that with that Achilles, you don't want to rush it. He said, yeah, he is at the point where at a four-month 
period where he's been working his ankle after 12 months off, he said, you want to kind of get him out there because he's showing that strength. But they are treating him as an individual injury. They're going to give him that full six months, not going to rush him back, even though obviously the situation would maybe call for that. But they're really taking his personal future into play here. Definitely. They're on the side of caution. This is the final year, the four-year transition to D1. Tournament eligible next year. Looking forward to his shooting prowess. Chaparral High School grad in Scottsdale. Martin all the way over to Russell. Russell takes his time looking for three. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, Martin does this. He's just a smart player. He got his deflection on the, on the defensive end that caused the trail steal the turnover. Then the cross court pass to Russell, who finally is able to knock down his first three of the tonight. I'll take that back. Give Russell now two three point shots. Howard. Howard over to Reed. Reed leaves it there. Got a boosty. Uses the back door. Did he call bank on that one? You got to call glass from that distance, don't you? Yeah, that's now the second three pointer that they have actually banked in. Don't see that every day. Take a point or two away. Right? Russell Vernon leaves for Fifi. Fifi pulls down, loses the handle. Picked up by Russell. To his right, driving. Maurice Howard can't believe it. Don't like to see Russell go down hard like that after the whistle, but look at that snap of a cross court pass there by Martin finds Russell and he has plenty of time to fix the laces on the ball and knock it in. Then go back to the I want to call that a lucky three. I, I'm just going to go ahead and call it luck that that one was not intended to be a bank three point shot from that area on the floor. And Russell connects. Look at this. 27 minutes of play, 20 points. Hey, he's doing it again. Bum ankle. Hey, just, you know, Nason's third leading scorer, and he's doing this, like I said, on one leg here in the second half. Quickly up the court, Russell trying to get a hand on the Kerwin Smith. This snags it away. Yeah, but you see Martin once again. Yep. Good position. The official rewarded him for the good D. Put in a face or a good, good <laughs> catcher. Yeah. It came flying around his ass. Surprised he didn't stop. I, I, I don't even know what, 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 what truck that was. He <laughs> came at me so quick. <laughs> oh. I had to protect my soda and my red vine. It's important. Priorities. Bands. Back out. Johnson goes down the three. Just inside the arc twist. Turns it to his right. Floater is short. Fifi comes up with it. They do. Top of the circle. Driving in the paint. Trying to dish. No look over to Kerwin. Get right back into. Boy, when things are going your way, right? I mean, it goes right back into his hands. 15 on the shot clock. Martin is going to try for three from the corner. Big rebound pulled down by Johnson. Leaves it for Vance. Johnson's approaching a double-double now. That was his eighth board. Vance is close to a double-double. He's got 13 boards with just the nine points. So we get some good contributions from those two big bodies underneath. Mosby. Double dribble. That's the second time Mosby's been caught up on that, looking for people to pass the ball to on the run. First half, he had to travel. This time, they actually do get him for the, the double dribble travel. Martin checks out. Freyer in the game. Russell to Adu. Kerwin Smith inside. Oh, picked off. Yeah, tried Vance. to go high, low. Smith tried to get that one down to Vernon. Good stop there by the Lopes. Russell drives, goes right to the left. Stops, pops, not there, but hey, Kerwin Smith put it back, right? Yeah, Kerwin Smith got down. He kind of tipped it with two hands, kind of like he was spiking a volleyball back across the net now. Give him seven boards, eight points. That's driving. Foul called. 
Yeah, Vance took that ball to the hole with the idea that I'm just going to get these shoulders on somebody and earn a trip to the stripe. Vernon called for his fourth personal foul, joining Freyer with four. 51 42, the Lopes over the Braves. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. Christmas from Grand Canyon University. Back live at GCU Arena where Mackerel Jordan just gobbled up a GCU cheerleader. Unbelievable. Where are the authorities? 51-42 is the score. Very easy town. Scott Williams, Kate Longworth with you. We'll keep you updated on all the developments here at GCU Arena. As uh, Fifi Adu stepping up for the uh, Lopes here in the second half. Yeah, he really needed him. You know, Dwayne Russell's not 100% out, but he's out there one leg. And Adu is doing what he needs to do to help this Lopes team try to get a victory. I love that one mount there from behind the arc. He's got two three-point shots tonight. That was in the first half when he just tricked the defense. I love this one here. He's using his wheels, a little sidestep. He's doing a good job on defense, getting deflections and steals as well. 14 points in the ball game and counting. Superstars entertaining the crowd here at GCU Arena during halftime and during that timeout. Well, they went right by the assistant coach. This is awful. This is can ill afford to lose players as and cheerleaders. This is awful. Perhaps Kate can give us an update on. Oh boy, that that's uh, that's a good look. Right there. What is that, Vegemite on his lip? Good. Gee, a little Nutella. Good thing Mom's here. No ice on there. Well, he gives up his body. He might not be pouring in a lot of points, but uh, defensively, leading the team in steals, he's doing whatever he can do. He's not afraid to shoot either. It'll, it'll come. Beefy to his laugh. Freyer. Freyer drives. Rebound. Loose ball knocked out of bounds. Who's it belong to? Braves. Yeah, Oscar Freyer, he's trying to get himself off that launch pad. He hasn't not been able to get it going offensively tonight. Just one of six from the field for only two points. He's done some decent things, uh, you know, as far as rebounding the ball, but that foul trouble has just kept him on the bench. Four personal fouls. He's got to be careful now here when he's guarding. Players with the basketball on the perimeter give more of a cushion. Now, players got four. Vernon's got four. They're both on the court. Doolin pulls back short. Russell with the rebound. That was a big time move by Doolin. Wasn't able to get the shot to go, but really created nice separation from the defense. You don't see a lot of headbands. Uh, you know, kind of harkens back to Porter. Yeah, and that's college days. I wore a headband and played it in uh, the pros towards the second half of my career. They became kind of a fashion thing. Helps keep the bald head warm. That's important. Henderson, Vance pushed that one back. Doolin off the glass hole, hoop, and the harm. 
Oh, no, he took the charge. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Keontae right. Vernon just got to a good spot on the floor, thank goodness, because that would have been his fifth foul. He got up outside that restricted area here and definitely takes that one right between the shoulder blades. Good job by that young man. He's, he's, he came to play here in the second half. Whatever coach Thunder Dan or Whatever you call it when he gets you know, a little upset at, at going into that locker room at halftime, whatever he says, dude, <laughs> was well received. Russell looking to score again. Oh, that's gonna be another opportunity to go to foul. I think that's gonna be two shots. That's the 10th personal foul on Alcorn State, and Lopes will be shooting two the rest of this game. Anderson calls. Two for Russell. Money so far from the line. 22 points. Perfect nine for nine from the free throw line. Lance has a career high 14 rebounds, tying that career high tonight. This is over to Johnson, flat footed three, kicked out. Fifi, oh, this will pick up that, stop right at the arc. Back out front. Good decision by Adu that time. He had Kerwin Smith running to his left. Might have tried to force it over there, but realizing time and score, let's. Make sure we get a good one on this possession up 10. Try the chance to push it to 12. Never mind. Kerwin Smith caught with an illegal down screen. Trying to free Russell. Kerwin back up to the top off the ball. It's whistle for the personal foul. The seventh. Five, 22 and counting. 10 point Lopes lead. Doolin inside. Mosby up over it. Freyer got up real high and pushed that up. Russell, no look pass. Picked off by Patterson. Patterson streaking in there. He got that one away from Smith. Be careful. Freyer. Vernon jumps over Mosby. Russell to his right. Fifi. Back out and look out. That's the one Fifi could have probably leaned just up into the defender and he got him up in there with that good ball fake. Maybe got an opportunity for three uh, free throws. He's so so good. He shoots 90% from the free throw line darn near. Can Russell do it? A number of occasions. Russell three, two, one. He's got to get a shot off Vernon from unknown territory. Keontae <laughs> Vernon. He has worked on that 16-foot jump shot. <laughs> And the hard work is paying off now. 12 point advantage for the Lopes here with just under 420 to play. Oh, look at Keontae Vernon. Bam! Yeah, Coach Robinson needed that timeout. A couple buckets by Vernon. This thing's now getting out of hand. You got to settle this team back down. They fought so hard, but they're starting to lose it here in the final moments. 57-43, the Lopes opening up their lead over to the Alcorn State Braves. 6-0 run in the last minute, 58. GCU looking for their seventh victory of the year. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. Christmas from Grand Canyon University.
Grand Canyon men's basketball is brought to you by your Valley Hyundai dealers. For a limited time, every day is Black Friday. Shop by Hyundai.com today. And by Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. GCU on top of Alcorn State, 57-43, 4-11 to go, second half. How about Keontae Vernon? The Vernon show the last minute or so. Yeah, doing it on the glass, doing it on defense, getting that steal, and giving the uh, Lopes their eighth fast break point with that two-handed slam. That's the thing of beauty. I think these guys all like that passive rotation across the top. I think Marley's like, hey, if you miss that one, it's not the end of the world. But the benefit of getting that and going the other way is the easy two points. And Lowe's have been having trouble scoring, so they need those fast break buckets and points in the paint. Close to that double double, eight points, nine rebounds, playing with four personal fouls. Trayer also on the court again with four personal fouls. Four minutes and counting. Doolin leads for Howard. Howard to his left. Back. Johnson. Oh no. Long three off the mark. Fifi climbs the ladder. Swatted away by Vance, and he's called for the foul. Yeah, Johnson wasn't able to get that one to go, but that's a design play for him to pull up from behind the arc. He's 0 for 4. But he, he is a what they call a streaky three-point shooter. He just hasn't been on the, the streak to get it to go down tonight. Send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, guys. Well, taking a look at the NCAA as a top 25 schedule. Number one, Villanova plays Wednesday night tomorrow against American. Number five, Duke beat Tennessee State yesterday at Cameron in North. The big battle between number six, Kentucky Wildcats, and number 10, Louisville, is tomorrow. The Wildcats fresh off that big win against, well, yeah, I had to mention it, Scott and Tar Hills in Vegas on Saturday. Also cost some people money, I've heard. Well, anyhow, the big game in Tempe is ASU coming off that disappointing loss. They're facing Creighton. They are 11 and 0. And then number 12, Virginia travels to the West Coast to take on 9 and 2 Cal tomorrow. Also a big one in Tucson tonight. Number 18, Wildcats are taking on the Lobos from New Mexico. Number 21, Florida State defeated Sanford yesterday, 76-68 in the final. Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, rounding out that top 25. Yeah, my Tar Heels, they, they tried to battle hard over the weekend against those Kentucky Wildcats, but they got a, they got a kid at Kentucky. The kid's name is Monk. He dropped 42 points on the Tar Heels. How does that happen? I don't know. How do they allow that to happen? I don't know. I'm going to stop sending checks. They continue to let that happen. 103 points, and his kid dropped 42 on them. <laughs> that's a way to do it, like Rich Reed has told us. And you, you would have followed them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not nice. Right. That's one way to stop them. Yeah, I probably would have had to do Plus something to try to slow them down. Uh, tie shoelaces together. 3.52 on the clock. If you weren't able to come out to the game tonight, we hope to see you on uh, Thursday. Wear your best ugly sweater. Yeah, I'll do sweater. I'm looking forward to that game. We're, no, we're not wearing ties and sweaters, right? Just sweaters. I, I think we leave it open, you know. I'm not wearing a tie. Well, all right. First opportunity in three years not to wear a tie. Yeah. You're risking Oh, it. Fifi, we yeah. him. Why did you Talks say about it? how good he is that? from the free throw line. We were saying that. I said yeah. he was almost 90%. And then he went up there and went 0 for 2. This is huge. Back out, Howard to his right, Patterson, near side, high by, by there by Freyer. Doolin looks inside. Johnson, long three, Howard off the mark. Rebound, battled after by a couple of great. Doolin able to yield to Johnson. Johnson pushes it back to Maurice Howard. Fresh 30 was on the clock after the ball hit the rim. Oh, look at all the room. Look at all the room. Doesn't connect. Kerwin late to the party. Yeah, Johnson just came out by that 
tenth point. He's been stuck on nine for a while. He got himself 12 boards to go at nine points, but he keeps shooting threes, and they're not falling for him tonight. He's back on his heels, too. Quick pass, Fifi, back out, Freyer to Russell. Ten on the shot clock, chewing it up. Russell, back out, Freyer. Looks for three. Heavy on the shot, pulled down by Doolin. Both teams getting a little frigid here. You see, this is where they miss a guy like Matt Jackson or uh, Josh Braun. They can go for somebody that can get something going from the outside. It can't always be Russell and a do, because as we know, uh, Frere's streaky from the outside, and, and Shaq Carter, uh, uh, yeah, Shaq Carr can't, he can't be, because uh, he's not a consistent outside shooter, so if they're not getting the penetration by Russell in addition to the bigs underneath, they have a tough time scoring from the perimeter. Braves just 4 of 25 in the second half, looking for their first bucket here in quite a while. And Vance puts it in, putting a 0 for 10 drought. They went about five and a half minutes without a bucket. Lopes haven't scored in two minutes, 11 seconds. That's a good use of the fast break right there. It's only their fourth. Points from the, on the fast break. Lopes have done a pretty good job of taking care of this basketball tonight. Just 11 turnovers, and make it 12 now on that one. It led to a couple buckets. Yeah, double double for Vance. 12 points, 14 rebounds, 14 boards. As mentioned earlier, career high for him. Senior forward. Well, the big men doing a good job for the Braves coming in here. Two and seven overall, including a six-game road trip. Went to four different time zones on this road trip. Did the Braves. And they're road warriors for sure. Tough to go out on the road for so much. You just, you're, you're, the practice time, you're just hurt by a lack of real good opportunities Ooh. for practice. Too soft by Russell. They belong to the Lopes. Yeah, Coach Robinson, he threw that trap on. He was expecting to try to get that ball back. He was oh so close of not only getting the ball back, but having an opportunity for an easy score after the after the turnover. Russell will have to be careful not to run the baseline this time as he will get whistled for uh, some, excuse me, Martin will get whistled for travel, and he's got to stay in one spot there. So the Lopes will have to make sure that they get somebody open. Look for the heat again. Inbound, Fifi quickly up to Russell. The pass, Patterson. Russell got a little bump from Patterson. Doesn't go. Patterson's going to be called. Third on Patterson. It looked like Russell tried to jump off his left leg to, to get that layup in. He's definitely or, favoring. He's, just, he's favoring that right ankle quite a bit. Seemed like the play might have been for him to go off the other foot, but anyway, he knows how to get that body contact and get to that free throw line. That's one guy that's earned a day off tomorrow. 24 points for Russell. 10 of 10 from the free throw line. Look at 11 of 11 now. Under two to go. Long three attempt, and it hits for A.J. Mosby. Russell, right there by Howell. Trying to get past midcourt. Russell goes around Howard. In a big loop, came back. Ten on the shot clock, got some help from Vernon. Russell driving up high, Vernon trying to tap it back. Here come the break. Oh, Vance almost beyond his fingertips. Just kept that foot in. Had a boosie. Back to the far side. Three-point attempt, and it connects for Maurice Howard. Well, don't go anywhere. A minute and 11 seconds is an eternity. It's an eight-point basketball game, and Coach Robinson called that timeout after that made field goal because he's going to put that press back on the lobes and see if he can't force a turnover this time. 6-0 run for the Braves here. The waning moments. Braves looking sharp in their two victories, scoring 
88 points per game in those two wins but just 51 points per game in their seven losses. They are at 51 right now. Nowhere near the 88. Yeah they when they're clicking on all cylinders and, and those bigs are hitting the threes that they've been shooting tonight and they're doing damage inside they they are dangerous. Ooh, that ball was deflected and almost stolen. Ooh, Freyer. Quickly, Martin. Russell. One minute to go. What are they going to do? Well, they're not fouling, so they're content to play out this clock. And too much time has gone now. There's a nice deflection there, but they, they've let 20 seconds come off that clock. And those are valuable 20 seconds when you're trying to come from behind by eight from eight points. Down. 11 on the shot clock. Bounce pass. Russell. 10. 9. Martin. Back to Russell. Oh, don't foul now, son. Oh, goodness gracious. Coach Robinson can't believe it. You found 35 feet away from the basket with just seven seconds on the shot clock. So you, you let you send Russell. 23 seconds come off that shot clock. Yeah, you got his 11-11 from the line tonight. Yikes. Beefy's kind of limping on the court here in front of us. So you're going to get iced down after this one. Maybe they just don't make basketball players like they used to back in my day. No. no these guys they don't make stuff like we <laughs> used to. Yeah, iron doesn't bend, so I don't know what they're making these players at us. No, these kids fight hard. I I, I say that just, just joking. Yes, it's a joke. It's a joke. Oh, Picked on him. Burn it. Another board. Vernon's looking for Fifi. No, taking a shot. Keontae Vernon. He was never given that. I know. He wanted to take that coast to coast for the flush. Finishing this one off in fine fashion. Drops for Howard. Well, wasn't pretty basketball game. Didn't always shoot good, but they did enough to get the victory here tonight against a real feisty Braves yep. team. I I'm give sure uh, Coach well Robinson swag. a lot of credit for having his guys compete tonight. That's a beat down a year ago. Coming here tonight, he gave GCU all that they could handle. Yeah, Robinson doing well. It's in his second season as head coach. He did seem to follow them in conference play. That'll do it for three, two, and one. The Lumps win 63 53. A nice, another nice game by Dwayne Russell. 27 points, but a nice contribution. Fifi Adu stepped up. Uh, all game long on both ends of the force and even toting that rock a little bit. He had the 14 points and Keontae Burnham joined him in double figures with a strong second half showing. He went for 10 points and 10 boards. Seventh victory of the season. Five and two now on their home court are the Lopes. They'll be taking on Arkansas Pine Bluff on Thursday evening. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you so much. Well, Coach, we talked at the break, and you really wanted your team to step it up in the second half. You pleased with their performance to close out this game? Yeah, you know, we, we just battled. You know, we found a way to win. Uh, you know, Dwayne, with that sprained ankle, really fought hard. Um, so we just found a way to win. Defensively, we were pretty good in the second half. Held him to a low percentage, got out and ran a little bit, so we'll take the win. Deontay sure seems to light a fire in that second half. What stands out to you with his play? Yeah, he's got to do it the whole game. I mean, him and Oscar, uh, they're taking a few games off, and we don't have enough guys for those guys to take days off. They have to come to play every night. Uh, Keontae's a good player. It's been a big part of what we're trying to do. Uh, he's got to play for 40 minutes. Is this team feeling the pressure with so many injured? Do you think the players that are out there are feeling like they have to do more with their game? No, I mean, I don't think they're feeling any kind of pressure. They may be a little tired, maybe found feeling a little sorry for themselves, but uh, it's a great opportunity for somebody to step up and play. I mean, a lot of these guys wouldn't be getting the minutes they are right now uh, with all these injuries, so it's time to just step up and play well. Absolutely right, and now they get a day off tomorrow, right? Yeah, uh, maybe. We'll see. All right, thank you, Dan Marley. Having a little fun after that one. They can get the 10 point lead, or 10 point victory, rather. But as you hear, he still wants to see more from this team. Obviously, they're going to need that heading into WAC play. Yeah, opportunity, as you said, to seize the day for many of these players to get this opportunity with the injuries to really find themselves in the spotlight to shine. We'll step aside. We'll be back quickly to wrap things up after a 10 point victory by GCU over Alcorn State on CW6.
right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. 63-53, the final score as you look at the final stats. Field goal percentage close. Came on in the second half for the Lopes. Three-point field goal percentage, four of 18 free throws, 19 to 28. 19, uh, 13 of those 19 were from Dwayne Russell. Turnovers, the margin going to the Braves there was 16 turnovers. Steals, nine for the Lopes. Big 10-point victory, one in which uh, I'm sure they're pleased with. Dwayne Russell went down with a tweaked uh, ankle injury, got it rewrapped, came back, and did Dwayne Russell-like numbers. Yeah, he really not, it didn't seem like it bothered him. In the first half, I mean, see, early in that second half, it was a little stiff. He was really limping out there. I don't think he really wanted to play much on the offensive end, but I think as he warmed up and it got loose, he was back to the same uh, Dwayne Russell we've seen, taking the ball in for floaters, knocking down yeah. outside shots. So, didn't seem to bother him too much. Time to revisit your three keys brought to you by Hyundai, your Valley Hyundai dealer. Shop by Hyundai.com today. Yeah, and Donald Driver, I, I think that they really did a nice job. They, they, you see the fast break points there, GC with the advantage there. But I, I like the fact they ran the uh, Braves off that three point line. They were 8 of 22 from the three point line. Three of those came late after the game was kind of already decided. And I like the Alex Haley did a nice job. Uh, uh, rebound the basketball, but really the point, the advantage of points in the paint, 28 to 12 advantage points in the paint was a big stat that I, I liked about that one. And then just the Michael Clark Duncan thing there. I think that this team doesn't matter who's on the floor or who's hot, who's not. You know, it was Jared Martin last game. He didn't have it tonight, but Fifi do steps up offensively or uh, Kerwin Smith off the bench in the first half had all the bench points. So they're finding ways to win even yeah. when they're not at full strength. So uh, you know, it just says a lot about way these guys, uh, the camaraderie that they have and how hard they'll fight for one another and try to lift one another up. And I can't forget Keontae Vernon. No, double -double. Keontae Vernon is double-double in pretty much everything that he did tonight came in that second half. Yeah, definitely stepped it up to, to eight points in the uh, second half, had two in the opening half, really turned it up as well defensively with a couple of key key steals and rebounds. How about your player of the game, though? 36 minutes, took four minutes to wrap that ankle up, got back into the game, scored 27 points. Yeah, fantastic. I love the dish down low to the bigs that he's able to do. He was only 6 of 20 from the field, but made a couple big shots late when they really need him, and it's so good, so crafty at just getting opportunities to find ways to get to the foul line. You mentioned 13 to 13 from the free throw line. I love the four assists, and also give him three rebounds that not a lot of rebounds over the course of that minute, but the big man that's not afraid to go, a little big man that's not afraid to go inside amongst the trees in battle. Well, you hope that ankle uh, gets some ice on it. Uh, this team rests up a little bit, and then they're back in action again on Thursday to uh, close it out before the Christmas. But the, on a bit of a roll, they're taking care of teams that they need to take care of. Yeah, they want to finish this non-conference uh, season with, with momentum going into the conference. We mentioned Utah Valley uh, coming in here for that first conference game, and They'll be they'll be playing what they'll be looking you know get a little revenge as GCU handled them pretty well last year and uh, got to you got to got to get that first one yeah uh, so that's just gonna be a, that's gonna be a big one but um, got to get some guys rested I you know Martin looked fatigued tonight after Blaine you know close to 40 minutes uh, against Bishop Valley State yeah got a, got a, got busted in the mouth but Mama's here Mama's yeah, gonna take yeah. care of him uh, tonight and tomorrow get him ready on for Thursday night and Dwayne Russell gets the day off. All right, no rest for these Lopes back in action on Thursday night. We hope you tune in as they prepare the next game against the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Thursday evening, the Golden Lions concluding a string of seven straight on the road, led by senior guard Giovanni Robinson. Be sure to tune in Thursday at 7 on CW6, online at gcu.tv, or on KFYI 1230 AM radio with Tom Kuyper and Michael Potter. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena for the Lopes. Beat the Braves 63-53. Please join us again Thursday night when GCU hosts Arkansas Pine Bluff. For Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful evening.